Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Halloween, and welcome once again to JumboCast coverage of the Collegiate Star League League of Legends tournament. My name is Andrew Howe, joined by Adi Palparik, and we've got an exciting matchup today between Tufts University Blue and Brandeis University's Roll the Dice. Now, Adi, as we head into the second week of competition here at CSL, we have started to get a feel of the strength of the teams here as they've played through their first best of three. And last week, we saw the Jumbos dominate WPI in a 2-0 sweep. Yeah, last week Tufts had a really strong performance. They were relatively consistently able to get leads through good mechanical execution and macro play, and they were able to capitalize them off them well in order to power themselves through fights and secure wins. Although there was some uh, shakiness in the middle of Game 2 last week, they were ultimately able to pull together and finish the game strong. And I think, uh, especially talking to uh, Morn after the game uh, in the interview, I feel like uh, they put themselves in a really strong position for Week 2. Absolutely. And Tufts will be using that same lineup that they used to grab that dub last week. They got Easy Life in the top lane, Morn in the jungle, Argentine import in the mid lane with bot lane Jansu and Constantine Valdor. And Adi, if there's a player to look out for on Tufts this week, it's definitely down in the jungle with Morn. Yeah, I know Morn has a lot of experience with uh, leagues like this as he would not only play the CSL last year, but he played it across uh, a couple of leagues over the summer. For example, the Phoenix Rising League with a different team. And uh, another thing, he has a really diverse champion pool. We talked a little about a little bit about Morn's champions last week, but one other thing I want to point out is his champion flexibility. I know Morn, like I knew Morn, like from a bit ago since we were both in like middle school, since the whole Night Blue Three Assassin one shot times, and he sure did pull off the whole Assassin one shot thing. He can still play a lot of assassins like the Kha'Zix and the Nidalee, which he had pretty strong performances in this season in solo queue. But he also has. Uh, a lot of other flexibility. Uh, in the PRL, he was known for his Jarvan. And last week, we saw him uh, go out of the uh, assassin archetype with picks like Hecarim and Trundle, which he piloted really well in order to uh, fit the team style composition and also uh, pull off a win for the Tufts. Yeah, and Morin has definitely been one of the most valuable players of this Jumbo team so far. Once again, Adi, as you said, really being able to fill in any role that he's really needed in. Um, but this week, Tufts, Morin, and the Jumbos will be facing off against Roll the Dice, the CSL representative from Brandeis University. Their starting lineup will consist of Mr. Krabs in the top lane, TW in the jungle, mid laner Yosa, bot laner Thresh, and support Red Strike. Adi, despite taking a tough 2-1 loss to Boston University last week, I'm pretty sure that Brandeis will be a much tougher matchup than the Jumbo's last one with a WPI. Yeah, for sure. Uh, just looking at the uh, solo queue ranks for uh, this team, it's definitely a little bit higher than WPI. And um, one thing I want to look at is specifically the top and jungle matchups because there's actually a decent amount of uh, champion um, uh, over. The, they, uh, the champions kind of uh, cross over a bit. In the top lane, we talked a little about Easy Life and his Shen and Maokai. And uh, on Brandeis, Mr. Krabs, he also plays a lot of Shen Maokai. So I anticipate the uh, Shen being a really uh, contested pick as Shen is one of the strongest top laners right now. And additionally, in the jungle, I talked a little bit about uh, Morn's Kha'Zix and his proficiency on it. But uh, TW also has been playing a lot of Kha'Zix recently and piloting it really well. So I'm really interested to see uh, how the teams decide to play around these picks. Yeah, Kha'Zix was banned away from Morn in the past two, in all, in both, sorry, both of the games against WPI. Um, WPI definitely did not want Morn on that signature champion. And talking about that Shen, it was first picked in both games on the blue side. B1 was Shen each each time. So it's definitely going to be really um, interesting to see if this Shen, once again, is a top priority pick because we saw Easy Life. Um, have a really great game on it. And WPI, um, WPI's top laner did have a decent game on it as well. Um, yeah, It's My Middle Lane did um, end up picking that Shen first, had a decent game, and but at the end of the day, was no match for the Tufts Jumbos. We are, uh, once again, this match will be a best of three. Tufts has, um, in the coin toss, taken red side to start for game one. Yeah, and uh, I just want to talk about the Shen a little bit more. Shen was first pick both games last week and has been a really strong pick, not only solo queue, but also professional play. And it really has started around like the middle of the season when uh, Riot decided to give a little bit extra shield on his passive, which is a really massive buff because it, max it makes it so Shen can trade really well in the lane phase. And after he gets out of lane phase with that level six ultimate, he has a lot of ability to uh, make a ton of plays and help out the team. So I anticipate this Shen either getting banned or picked up really early. 
Yeah, the Shen definitely once again a very powerful pick, but um, Easy Life is definitely capable of playing many other champions. As, as we said before, the Maokai, and in, in, in addition to that, we have the Mordekaiser, Garen, Malphite, any any of these champions really. And once again, kind of overlaying a, a, a bunch of different archetypes, but I guess more specifically the tank slash playmaker um, sort. Um, and is Easy Life has been willing to play weak side a lot of the times um, recently. Yeah, but at the same time. Uh... Easy Life and Morin have a decent amount of synergy. We saw last week uh, Morin coming up top lane, level 3, try to get a lead and uh, really uh, pressing that advantage. So I think they have a lot of flexibility with that. Yeah, um, we should certainly um, see a lot of that. But Adi, we're about to head into the draft for game 1. We're just getting a little, we're just getting a couple of things sorted out uh, with some of the players on the other teams just to make sure that everyone is sorted out um, before game one begins. But looking at this draft for game one, I know we talked a lot, a lot about uh, the jungle matchup as well as the top side, but maybe looking more towards the bottom lane, uh, something I did want to point out is last um, week, Constantine Valdor uh, on support picked Rakan and Leona, two very um, heavy engaged playmakers. Um, do you think we'll see more of that um, in this uh, series next this week? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, both supports uh, coming into this game have a lot of experience this season playing the more engaged style supports. And those kind of supports have been uh, really dominating just this entire season. Pro play in solo queue and in um, CSL. And uh, personally, I really love seeing engaged support meta. It means it's a lot more fun to watch the bot lane skirmishes and also uh, the fights can uh, break out really fast, which I think is really interesting. Another thing I want to talk about in the bot lane, though, is uh, Jian Su. Last week, he was able to pull out the vein, which was a very spicy pick, and uh, he was able to pilot it very well. There was that one play towards the end of the game against WPI in Game 2 where uh, he was able to utilize the fact that uh, Zaya had mispositioned, and uh, even though Vayne has short range, was able to get on the back line and really take over that fight. So uh, I really want to see uh, how Jian Su's uh, champion flexibility plays out here. And talking about AD carries just for a little bit longer, Adi, um, going over to the Brandeis spot lane, we have Thresh and Red Strike here. And now, um, a lot of the solo queue data um, that we were able to garner from the side of Brandeis was not super complete. It looks like a lot of these um, players don't play that much solo queue. But looking at Thresh from China specifically, uh, he does play a lot of other roles, but the three main AD carries that we see from him are Thresh, Ezreal, Oh, sorry, Senna from Thresh are Senna, Ezreal, and Ash. And um, other than that, he doesn't really play that much um, AD carry. And compared to um, Jansu, who has much a larger champion pool, do you think this is something that um, Tusk might try to target um, in the bans and maybe in some of the pick phases here in the draft? I mean, I think so. Uh, not only are like Senna, Ezreal, and Ash really integral to this player, like you said, they're just really strong ADCs this season. They have like the utility and like a little bit of safety to uh, apply a decent amount of DPS and add a lot to the teams. And they've been uh, really strong recently. But at the same time, I don't think that they will be able to um, pincer uh, Thresh too much because uh, while Thresh, like you said, doesn't play a ton of AC, uh, he does play a lot of uh, support. And I feel like there definitely is um, carryover, especially in the lane phase of uh, between uh, support and AC. And... Um, while maybe ADC mechanics might be lacking a little bit, um, after a certain threshold, I feel like it shouldn't matter too much. I still think he'll be able to have a strong performance. Absolutely. And once again, we apologize for the short delay that we're having here before we get into the champ select here. Um, we do have um, a bit of, we're having a bit of trouble getting um, some of the players into the lobby. Uh, once again, um, I think we're about to get the draft started in just a few minutes. Um, but yeah, Adi, is there anything else that you want to talk about be with this matchup before we head into Champ Select? Um, not uh, really. Uh, we talked a little bit about Argentina Emperor as uh, he hit Challenger in LAS for uh, coming to Tufts and is a very strong player. And uh, he has a lot of uh, flexibility as in he actually t plays a ton of support in the NA region. But uh, over in LAS, he does play a lot of mid lane. And I feel like uh, we've definitely seen his strength in... Uh, scrimmages and in the last week and uh, i'm again like always really excited to see what he can do in the mid lane yeah definitely someone to look out for once again argentine import our challenger la south previously player um is definitely going to be um a really major focal point here for the tufts university team um yep we are about ready to go into the draft uh, once again we are not going to be on 
um, the League of Legends client just because, for the first game at least, um, simply um, because um, not everyone owns the same champ, all the champions. Um, so we are going to be on Pentacue for the draft phase um, today. And here we go. We're going to start off the draft right now. And we see, first off, Ash being taken away uh, against Jansu, um, while, as well as Elise. While on the red side, uh, Alistar and Thresh will be taken away for the side of Tusk. Yeah, and there's the Ash ban like you were talking about. It's actually from the side of Brandeis, but it still makes a lot of sense as uh, Ash is just a really strong ADC with the uh, ultimate leading to a lot of picks and just uh, having a decent amount of DPS and utility. Yeah, so Senna is going to be the final ban here for Tufts, taking that away from Thresh there in the bottom lane. So blue blue side once again for Brandeis. We will see what champion they will lock in with their first pick. Once again, as we said, Adi, the Shen is going to be a top priority, but no, it is going to be the Leona being locked in first for Roll the Dice. Yeah, and I really like this because Leona is a champion that is picked both by uh, Constantine Valador and Red Strike, and uh, it's a very powerful pick right now. And uh, with, the, with them banning the Shen away, uh, I really like the prioritization. So, so, so that with that support being taken away, once again, Shen was taken off, um, was off the table for this first game. Tufts will have this second, these next two picks. Um, and on the red side, last last game, last series, sorry, they picked Mord and Galio in this rotation. Will be interesting to see if anything changes this time around, as uh, it will be Jin and Morgana presumably being locked in, a very strong lane dominant bot lane for the Jumbos to start this game off. Yeah, um, we saw Jiansu pilot a really mean Jin in the uh, last game, you know, uh, getting that first blood really early and uh, having a strong performance. And the Morgana just, it seems like a really good pick into the Yoda, you know. Being able to counter a little bit that engage with the Black Shield can add a lot. And it's going to be Kha'Zix actually taken away from the side of Morn. So TW will be having this comfort pick. Uh, the purple bug will be on the blue side jungle for this game one. And once once again, Adi, we're talking about these contested picks. And Kha'Zix this early in the draft um, is something that we were kind of expecting. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Kha'Zix was not banned. Morn and TW both play a ton of Kha'Zix, and they're very proficient at it. So uh, I think it makes sense to see the priority uh put it in the second pick for the Kha'Zix. And I'm excited to see uh, what both TW is able to do with it and if uh, Morin has a little bit of uh, counter picks uh, in store for it as he also plays a lot of Kha'Zix. We're going to see MF and Leona for the bot lane for Thresh and Red Strike on the side of Brandeis. Going to be matched up against that Jin Morgana, as we said, I do think that Morg is a good pick into this Leona to counter it. But the MF, once again, very strong in the lane. And this team has very heavy team fight potential uh, early on in the draft for the side of Brandeis. Yeah, and uh, I think we're still waiting on the third pick for Tufts. But uh, overall, the drafts look uh, pretty good. Uh, we've seen, obviously, more picks from Brandeis. And uh, I think they're... Uh, the ball lane is definitely going to be very interesting as the Jim Morgana into the MF Leona can lead to uh, pretty explosive gameplay. It is going to be Zach, the secret weapon being locked in for Tufts. Morn going to be playing the heavy tank. Uh, once again, we are talking about this diversity in play styles here for the Jumbo Jungler. And um, basically the exact opposite of Kha'Zix is this Zach. <laughs> And here we can really see, like you're saying, the flexibility. More than able to like pick that, play that more uh, team-oriented pick potential, heavy ganking uh, Zach. But one thing I also want to point out is that when you're playing Zach jungle and trying to get those early ganks, you kind of need a little bit of like winning lanes to come into. You have the ability to have a really long-range ganks, but if you're not able to have a ton of follow-up or kill pressure with it, it won't be able to do as much, and the Kha'Zix might be able to uh, run away with the game. And after this first rotation of picks, we're back into the ban phase again. We're going to see Lucian being taken away by Tufts. Very strong flex pick. Even with the MF already locked in, that marksman can be going mid or top. So very solid pick. And on top of that, Easy Life will not be able to play Vladimir in this game. Very, once it, or Argentine import, sorry. Very um, heavy comfort pick for both of these um, uh, players here on the side of Tufts. Yeah, and I really like the respect from Brandeis banning out that Vladimir. We saw uh, Argentine import really... Uh, 
add a lot to the game too last week against WPI. Uh, I talked a little bit about how Tufts had a little bit of a shaky mid game, but uh, as Vladimir was constantly scaling and didn't have much pressure on him, uh, he was able to really take over fights and uh, like destroy the back line of uh, WPI. Yeah, so LeBlanc and Lucian taken off of uh, the table for the side of Tuss, and Yusa definitely is very comfortable on those champions. We do see the Oriana and the Talon left up, champions that Yusa definitely is comfortable on. So it's going to be um, really interesting to see where Tufts tries to put that counter pick with that last pick and who they decide to pick with this R4. Mm -hmm. Oh, and a Kale ban from the side of Brandeis. That's... Uh... Really interesting. Uh, I haven't seen too much of Kale recently, but I have seen it picked a couple times. And uh, if they're afraid of uh, the scaling side of tops, it makes sense. So yeah, Kale, as well as that Vladimir taken away to round out the ban phase in this game one between Tufts and Roll the Dice. So we're going to see this fourth pick being locked in for the Jumbos, either going mid or top. Both sides elected to choose their junglers and bot lane to start this game off, unless we see something completely out of the ordinary, something like a... Actually, not, not, not exactly completely out of the ordinary, but that is going to be the Galio lock-in going towards Argentine import in the mid lane. We saw him have a great performance on the Galio, um, I think, in game in game one, I think, of last week's series against WPI. And he's definitely capable on a, such a supportive champion here. Yeah, and last time we saw uh, Morin pick a diving champion like Hecarim, uh, and they were able to pull off some uh, really great executions with the Galley Ultimate and the ganks in like, the top lane and the bot lane. And uh, I think with the Zac pick, it really makes sense that the Galley comes in as well. Corky is going to be locked in for the side of Brandeis. We're going to see Yusa pick up this magic damage dealing marksman. And for this final pickup for Brandeis, I'm expecting something a little bit more on the tanky side. But for Tufts, we have this Galio and Zach picked up for the Jumbos, but um, not a lot of DPS coming in here. We do see the Maokai is still available, but I'd be really surprised if Tufts decides to pick that up. I would expect more of a heavy damage, high DPS jungle, uh, top laner to finish off this draft. Yeah, with picks like uh, Jin and Galio, Jin does do a decent amount of damage, but the DPS is uh, a little awkward with uh, the four autos and the reloading, so I would think there needs to be a little bit more damage on those side of Tuss. And that is Volibear going to be picked up for the side of Mr. Krabs. Brandeis will be playing um, with this volley... Uh, with the old icon in here for the pentacube, but that is not going to be the old champion. The new reworked volley bear is going to be the one played. I've obviously um, side note here, Seraphine while being released on the main client will not be available for play for the next two weeks due to the rules here at CSL. Um, so in case anybody is wondering where that was um, not going to be picked up here, Tufts with this final pick has to go with something to counter this volley bear for easy life. Yeah, I think with the Volibear Cossacks, it's, it's uh, really threatening, a very powerful 2v2 up in the top lane, and uh, just the engage potential uh, in the mid to late game with the Leona, the potential Corky package, and Volibear can be pretty devastating inside of Tuss. What will be the final lock-in for the Jumbos? We are still <laughs> waiting for this final pick. Once again, I'm expecting something with a more high DPS, something maybe along the lines of a Mord, or maybe a Garen. But it is going to be instead the Mordekaiser. Yep, picked it, picked up for easy life to counter that volley bear. I do think that is a fairly good matchup, and I. But um, yeah, round that definitely will be a good way to round out the draft for the Jumbos. Yeah, I think I really like this uh, Mordekaiser pick because it has the ability to take out some of those uh, tankier champions from the fight, which uh, allows for uh, Jin and Galio to really uh, destroy the squishier champions. And so this is the this we have finalized the team comps here for this matchup between Roll the Dice and Tufts University Blue. Uh, overall, just looking at these team comps, just before we head into a quick break, Adi, what do you think about um, the team comps, and who do you think really um, took a took a win here early on in this draft? I think uh, Tufts has a decent early game uh, comp. They have a lot of pick potential with the Galio, Zach, Morgana, and Jin. However, I feel like if we uh, start going into mid to late fights relatively even, I'm sort of on the Brandeis side. Just the Corky package plus Leona plus Misfortune Ulti plus Volibear can just uh, really uh, do a lot of damage to Tufts. However, 
with the Mordekaiser, there is a lot of potential to disrupt some of those combos with the uh, Mordekaiser ulti taking out the Ball Bear, trying to dash it, or uh, taking out the Corky, or taking out the Leona. Yeah, so once again, going to be a really insane matchup here between Brandeis and Tufts. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back on Summoner's Rift. So don't go anywhere. We got game one between Brandeis and Tufts right after this.
to Summoner's Rift. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Summoner's Rift. We got Brandeis versus Tufts, and right off the bat, we've got a level 1 invade here. The Dark Binding is going to land onto Thresh from China. Uh, surprisingly, the um, Deadly Flourish there from Jansu did not root. Nice cleanse there from the MF. But Adi, right off the bat, we got some early action here with this level 1, and it's definitely going to be a banger of a game. Yeah, for sure. We see the double cleanse inside of uh, Brandeis, and I think it's super smart, especially for like what ex exactly what just happened, you know? Yeah, and, and right, right off the bat, that's a summoner burn inside of Tuff, so really great job with that invade. Um, both sides will be starting on the bottom side of the map, both junglers, sorry, Morn and TW, will both will be there. We do see the W start from Argentine Import, um, not going that um, Guardian as we saw last week, but uh, once it, having the Aftershock instead, definitely going to be able to put up some nice damage here early on against Corky, uh, who does primarily magic damage. Yeah, I actually had to talk to... But, but like you saw there, the deadly aftershock trade that I would give you is definitely much better than the aftershock. Sorry, I think uh, on my on my screen I lagged out for a second. Okay. Oh, oh coming in with an early gank here, level three already. Right. Gonna flash for the Q onto Red Strike. That's gonna be first blood onto John to fresh from China. Has to run, has to flash available, but no cleanse. He's dead for binding. Is not going to hit. Uh, she takes two church shots there. Uh, but yeah, early first for the tough. Um, great job by Morn once again with early proactivity, um, getting an early kill for Yeah, and I really like that from the side of the jungle. You know, uh, punishing the back then didn't have this. Oh, and Thresh actually chunked out very low here. Um, uh, yeah, so, uh, so I think this audio is on my end, um, which is why uh, the audio might be the talking might be a little bit uh, wonky or thing. Yeah, but like I was saying, kind of like the Playing that well, yeah. Um, early on, um, I think Adi's a little delayed on my screen. Adi, when you're oh, okay, uh, uh, do you want me to Hello, sorry about that everyone, but um, it appears that we made you back, Audi, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Um, so yeah, I think, sorry about that um, guy, a bit of a latency issue here on our Discord server. Um, Audi is actually not on because of us. Um, it's actually streaming all, all the way up from Maine. Um, so once again, thanks to him. But really sorry about the issues. We we're trying to get them sorted out really quickly. Uh, yeah, uh, early on, a quick uh, first S34 um, on Morn um, with Jansu actually. That first block onto Red Strike. We're going to see a trade here in the mid lane. The Osta actually gets chunked out very low, but here comes TW in that top side. I think Electrocute, but and that's just me and me. Easy kill onto Easy Life. Mr. Crab is going to pick that up himself. Yeah, talking about a little bit of uh, the threatening. Uh... 
the trending 2v2 of Voluntary and the Classic, so uh, really uh, adding a lot of questions and good job, job from uh, Brandeis capitalizing on that. Yes, uh, quickly the gold is uh, even here to pass 200 gold feet. It does not mean much in the grand scheme of things. Uh, but yeah, early on, a lot of proactivity from the junglers early on, uh, as we said, core quickly. Very impactful. This ocean dragon being started by uh, the jumbo is going to be really big for the regen here on the side of this Zack and Mordecai early on. So, first dragon of the game, first dragon of the series going over to Tux. Yeah, I think that's the weird part this this pick to the top lane. Tux has advantage in the bot lane, so it means they're going to have the ability to uh, get more of those dragons early on. The infernal to get either down or cut for its soul. Um, but early on, uh, a lot of basically expect to get early specter copy from guys up in the top lane. For a team that adapt to come, the Fortifies are very solid early. And I'm no damage though. And this is the power of that Jin Ragana. One bind leads to another, and that's a huge shot on Red Shack Selena. Yeah. I think the game is, is just, just gonna uh, play like this for a little bit. Uh, with, with that pick potential in the bot lane of that minutes of this game. Uh, yeah. Uh, I didn't pull, but, but I think I'm having some. Uh, uh, I'm gonna try to reset my computer quickly and. Uh, we can uh, try to see that fix it. Uh, <laughs> Alright, so it will be um we're really sorry to hear that. Um and once again sorry to all you guys who basically organized uh, this remote broadcast um, from many different spectrums here and so we're gonna see a bit of a gank in the bottom side of this blade. Jansu is dangerously low, ignite is being popped and that is a kill for Thresh coming in. Um and it's going to be Be Argentine import here. Justice Punch is going to land, and with the Q, it's going to be a one for one, a two for both members of the Grandice bot. Yeah, that looks like a so. pretty good fight for uh, Grandice at the beginning. Uh, they were able to get the jump, but uh, they were able to uh, secure those both of those kills. Oh, Lauren is coming in for a gank here. The flash, let's bounce, will knock backwards. Yusa and Argentine import will pick up the second clip game for him. Himself. A really brilliant gank there from Morn, using the ultimate to knock him back into the Galio, and Yusa is once is now dead, and another kill will go over to this guy. And this is a little bit of the synergy that I was talking about uh, before, and a little bit of the synergy that I wanted to see them have with the uh, diving jungler plus the Galio. Uh, Galio was able to TP into the bottom lane, get a kill, and then just immediately ultimate back with the Zac diving in onto the Corky. That is one strong statue there. Argentine import with a nine minute proto belt. Going to be very impactful and it's going to be really effective in helping him clear these early waves and getting him into these um, into more of these rooms that we were seeing from him earlier. Yeah. He's I'm not available for Yusa and it doesn't look like he's going to be able to use it. Look at that chunk damage coming out from Argentine import, bringing down Yusa to below 300 HP. Constantine is here to try and follow up, but there's a ward that's possible. Yeah, we talked. I talked a little bit about how there may be a little bit of damage lacking on the side of Tus, but uh, if you have, again, a 9 minute protobell from a Galio, that is going to be a ton of damage. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and Argentine import once again showing um, huge um, signs here. Um, he is one of the stars of this Tus roster and is putting in the work early on here in this game. Yeah, and I think uh, one thing to say is while both teams are relatively like playing towards their comp strengths, Tufts is doing a really good job of it. Just uh, getting a ton of picks early and uh, trying to get those leads and uh, using the tools that they have really well, especially the uh, Zac. Yep, and Morn has been a part of two really big ganks and has um, really 
propel the Argentine import into the spot that he's in right now. Wow, big crit there from double up there from Thresh. Um, but yeah, looking at the overall um, picture of this game, it's going to be a 1,000 gold lead for the Jumbos um, against Roll the Dice. And Brandeis, um, they are, they do have a really good scaling here with the Corky and um, with the MF at least. But looking at that top side with Kha'Zix and Volibear, not as much scaling as you would like from a team that is now about 700 gold behind. Yeah. Uh, I think out of the tanks, uh, Volibear probably does scale a little bit more, but like I said, probably not as much. That's going to be dragging and started up once again. Doesn't look like anyone on Brandeis is really able to compete with this. We're going to try to see a, maybe a Miracle Steal. Bullet Time is going to come out and chunk more down to below 100 HP. That's going to be a passive. Maybe pop? No, but that's going to be Johnson falling down there. TW will pick that one up. Passive is how pop? for Morn, and it looks like they're going to try to be killing this Blaz, but there's a Stormbringer coming out from Mr. Krebs. That's going to be the kill going on to Morn, and Constantine is the next target. Thresh will pick that up, and that is two kills for the MF, and a brilliant trade, three for zero there, for the side of Brandeis um, in return for that trade. Yeah, I mean, good job from Kels for securing the Dragon, but Brandeis is really able to take over that fight at the end. Colleagues coming in in the back and uh, getting, that, getting a ton of damage down. Just the rest of Brandeis coming in and uh, cleaning up. And on top of that, that is going to be the Rift Herald picked up from TW and spawned in the mid lane, getting all of those plates. I think that was three there for the side of Brandeis. Maybe even fighting and pushing for this first tower. I don't know if it's going to be possible with the waves in place. Morning's going to try and jump in here as well as the hero's entrance. And this could be a big turnaround. That's a taunt onto Yusa. And that's too much crowd control. The cleanse will not save you, my friend. And Mr. Krabs will follow as well. So a little bit of an overextension there for the side of Brandeis. After that really good team fight, we'll end up getting two more kills onto the side of Tufts and more importantly, onto Argentine Import. Yeah, once again, there's the Galio Zag. Zag diving in with the Galio backup in the ultimate, just doing so much and uh, punishing Brandeis for reading for that tower. Yeah, a bit of an a bit of an engage there in the bottom lane. Nice bind landing onto Cox from Constantine onto Thresh, but that's that cleanse once again being used. So much crowd control on the side of Tusk, and this cleanse ability will be very impactful later on into this game. We're gonna see a trade onto the top side. Death Rom is available for Easy Life, but I don't know if he wins this regardless. The Stormbringer is up for Mr. Krabs, and it looks like Easy Life is running for the hills. Meanwhile, in the bottom side of the map, oh no, we're gonna switch over to the top side actually. Mr. Krabs is almost able to kill off Easy Life. He has the potions ticking, he has the Death Rom available. And it looks like he's going to be able to join the rest of his team, but TW is there to stop him. That's the leap in, and that's the second kill of the game going over to Kha'Zix. Yosa is trying to get in damage with the Rockets, but he might have stepped way too far. That's the taunt, that's the knockback, and that is the kill going over to Argentine Import. Once again, this Galio is becoming so huge as Yusa gets punished once again. Uh, Andrew, this is turning into quite a game. It seems like, oh, and there's a little bit another engage again. Uh, two tanks not going to be able to do that much damage to each other, but yeah, Adi. Uh, Um, really back and forth game. We have 13 kills before yeah, the 14. Yeah, I mean, game there's just like so much picks with like the Volibear having the 1v1 advantage against the Mordekaiser and the Kha'Zix is really strong, but just the crowd control with the Zag is just allowing for a lot of re-engages to, uh, you know, make this into a Rick very fight-heavy game. It's going to be really important on the side of Brandeis. And this is the exact kind of fight game that Tufts was looking for. We mentioned how this team comp is a little bit low on the DPS side. But getting all these kills early onto Argentine import is going to be super valuable. Um, let's try and get a bunch of mixed damage. Um, here. We're going to see a Solar Flare issued on onto Constantine, but uh, without any follow-up, not really much that he can do. Constantine sh um, shoves that shield onto herself, and that Morgana will not be in any danger. Right? Yeah, and it seems to me that the... Uh, oh, the... Uh Again. Oh, fight in the bot lane. That's going to be a kill on the Constantine. Nearly no. Yeah, the Ignite's going to finish him off. The curtain call will be able to finish off another. But that's going to be two kills going in return from Brandeis. A good, a good set of engagements from them. But here comes Argentine. He doesn't have the flash, but he has a taunt. He's going to land that. Deathly Flourish will be flashed away from him. And Johnson will pick up a 600 gold shutdown for himself. TW will follow that up with another kill in return. So overall, still a favorable trade for Tufts. I mean, sorry, for Brandeis. Um, with a bit of a failed tower dive and over engagement there for the Jumbos. Yeah, and I think just the uh, Kha'Zix is doing so much right now, uh, applying a ton of damage and really turning those fights in their favor. Yeah, certainly so. This um, T 
TW, um, once again, one of the higher ELO players here on the side of Roll the Dice. Um, and he is really showing why he is the star of his team. 3-0 and 4. Has a dust blade already completed at the 15 minute mark. Going to be doing so much damage, especially to any targets that he finds isolated um, at the later stages of the game. The picks are going to be super valuable here for uh, Brandeis. Yeah, one thing to talk about is the fact that while Kalix is super strong, we have a Mordekaiser on the side of Tufts, and uh, I feel like if the Kalix wasn't in any of those fights, it would be very, very uh, Tufts heavy. Tufts heavy favored. Yeah, easy life has kind of stuck to splitting up in the on the top side, getting a lot of damage onto that outer turret, but um, not too much so far. Does have the Leandris finished up, but I think is actually behind in gold um, compared to Mr. Krabs to the kills. Yeah, I think that makes sense. You know, uh, Ball Bear does have a lot of kill pressure early, and uh, usually wins a lot of those one v one matchups. Here's the dragon fight here. TW is going to try to be caught out, but there's that huge package coming out from Yusa saving that in order for, to have a good dragon fight. The flash less bounce is going to come in, as well as the hero's entrance. Going to be landing that knockup onto Red Strike, but it's only going to be one. And the Zenith Blade in, a little bit overambitious there from Red Strike. He's going to end up falling, but Constantine will be the one in return. Morn is going to have that passive proc and probably easily finished off, unless Easy Life has something to say about it. No, he does. And that's going to be a knockup here. Death Realm is going to be issued onto the Kha'Zix for the Mordekaiser. And it, but it looks like he will pick that kill up but he will die in return. A 4 for 2 for Brandeis as they will be looking for this Mountain Dragon, trying to even out this Dragon Yeah, and I like the idea of us trying to catch out, like, Alex is able to get out, and that beautiful package plus Misfortune Ultimate, Ultimate able to, like, really force Tufts into a bad spot, and uh, they were just all able to get pretty low, and uh, when, they re when there was the re-engage with Liliana, uh, there's... Two, two little health bars for them to turn that fight successfully. Yeah, and really get really great job from Yusa. That package um, was so impactful in that fight, but it looks like Thresh might be caught out a little bit. Clint, once again, going to be used, um, but that's just going to be a kill. Four shot will finish him off, and Jansu will pick up another shutdown for himself. He might only have three kills, but he's picked up three pretty impactful kills for himself as that outer turret is going to fall in favor of Brandeis. Yeah, and I think Tuss is doing a really good job of getting those picks when Brandeis has those like uh, winning moments. Where they're trying to get as many objectives as they can after a win fight. Uh, they're able to use their pick tools to try to punish them for overs. And I think uh, I think that's uh, really good. It's his team in this game. Absolutely. So so at the moment we have about a one and a half thousand gold lead in favor of Brandeis at the 18 minute mark of this game we're going to see Rift Herald picked up by TW uh, and potentially could be used um, to try and um, push for some objectives I do think that taking that second Rift Herald is good if you don't really have to give up anything and it looks like um, in TW circumstance not a lot was sacrificed in order to pick that objective up yeah, uh, like you were saying, this air shell isn't too impactful, but if it's free, there's no reason not to take it. Thresh from China has actually picked up surprisingly five kills for himself. I'm actually I'm I, I don't really um, remember when exactly these kills happened, but kind of out of nowhere, this MF is going to be super strong. Has the essence reaver completed? Just finished that call off. And it's going to have a lot of gold to her name to finish this game off. Yeah, I think that's really smart resource allocation to the side of Brandeis. Like, yeah, the Cogs has been really instrumental in this fight and has uh, 10 kill participation, but uh, seven of those are assists, and I think that's uh, really smart as it gets to redistribute the gold onto the carries. There's an engage here. Morn with that elastic slingshot will be forcing the flash out of Red Strike, so really another uh, summoner blown for just the cost of an E, but here comes the Jin ultimate. Curtains have been called, and Galio is trying to taunt onto Thresh from the backside. And it oh, the flash binding from Constantine will go way wide. It's a nice sidestep there from the MF, but that's eventually going to be the taunt and the inevitable death of Thresh um, eventually. In <laughs> just a couple of seconds, Morn will steal that with the E, taking that away from Argentine. Said you have you have way too many kills for my like, and I'm going to take one for myself, and that's going to be the MF falling. For the side of brain. Yeah, but the MF played that really well. Uh, he's taking up a lot of time, and in the meantime, Forky was, you know, chipping away at that top tower. And uh, while MF was, did eventually fall, the amount of time that Tufts had to put into that kill was a lot. 
Yep, definitely a good job of him to buy some time, and that's going to be, um, with those objectives picked up, a 2,000 gold lead. Now, um, kind of expanding a little bit for the side of Brandeis. This is a situation that we haven't really seen Tufts in that much, um, especially in that last week. We're seeing um, the Jumbos playing from behind for once. Um, Adi, what do you think um, they have to do in order to try and turn this game back into their favor? I mean, I talked a little bit about this in uh, Champ Select, that if they came out even, I'd probably uh, favor Red Eyes a little more. However, we have seen Tufts effectively use their tools, so maybe they can find a TW uh, extending a little too far in a jungle or find MF a little bit too far forward again. They can uh, try to get some more picks and uh, they may turn a pick into an objective and uh, gain a lead. Resets coming out from both sides. I really like the Merc Treads um, on four members of Brandeis. Just looking at all that CC, it really will put a shiver down your spine. And so you definitely want um, a lot of that tenacity, which these Mercury Treads will provide. Um, which are very impactful against the side of Tusk. We're going to see this fourth dragon of the game, Mountain Drag. A bit of uh, a misplay there from Argentine there. I think if he held the Taunt Dot for a little bit longer, could have extended the range, could have landed that. Uh, but it's not going to be the case, and it looks like Red Strike will get away with it all. Yeah, uh, and one more thing to talk about with the uh, gold lead. Uh, if uh, there are only one tower taken from the side of Tufts and three from Brandeis, and only a 2,000 gold lead, so one win fight it could easily mean that 2,000 gold lead uh, gets diminished as uh, taking two towers could uh, really narrow the margins. Rift Carol popped on the top side of the map. Very smart play from TW, knowing that with this added pressure, it's going to be really hard for Easy Life to try and join the fight. Dragon is about to spawn. Nice job by Morn to use that Blast Cone to get out of the way. But this is going to be the Dragon started up. Argentine Import is trying to stall out the side of Brandeis uh, with his Galio. Solar Flare is going to land onto Jansu, and Morn is going to pick up the Dragon for himself. Bullet Time is starting to melt the side of Tusk, but not melting them enough. TP coming in from both the top laners, and that's going to be. Kills going over both sides, and Mr. Krabs is way overextended, and he is going to probably fall. Curtain Call opens up, but hold on, there comes Yusa on the side. It's going to be forced the ultimate to cancel. That's going to be more picking up the shutdown on the Corky. Nice job using that package there, but that's going to be a four, a three for two. Sorry, wow, Thresh picks up a kill for himself to try and even it out a little bit. Yeah, three for two for the side of Tufts. So one team fight for them, as well as Soul Point for themselves. A uh, very valuable team fight and a great win for the Jumbos. Yeah, it just seemed to me, Brandeis, uh, they really had their uh, composition taken apart with that last fight. The uh, power control from uh, Galleon and Zach, uh, since they're engaging again on Volgar. Oh, yeah, it looks like a Mr. Krabs was a little bit too far, and that's going to be the fourth shot taken down, Mr. Krabs. The Volley Bear has fallen, doesn't have any armor for himself, actually, as that means that Jansu will be melting him down with this crit build that he built up for himself. Yeah, uh, that, that last fight was a uh, kind of Argentine import difference, you know? Uh, the crowd control from the Zack and the Galio, plus the crit, massive hero's entrance, really uh, had to separate out that uh, composition. So his fortune was on the other side of the wall while Kha'Zix was getting hit by all those uh, giant green blobs and uh, white statues. <laughs> 24 minutes into this game, Brandeis still have the lead gold lead for themselves at about a thousand. As we get later into this game, um, the gold lead will be less and less um, important um, as the items start to come in. But at this, yeah, at this point, about a thousand gold is uh, almost. And I was talking about how uh, finishing up those last two towers, they weren't able to do that. However, they put themselves at soul point, and uh, I think uh, each not, each like dragon soul is estimated to be about around five to six thousand gold worth of stats. So uh, if they're able to turn that into a soul, it would definitely be worth it to side us. Baron Nasher now on the table for both teams as we have passed the twenty minute mark. Um, with the teams being so even, it will be really risky for um, either side um, to try and start this up without a wand fight. But uh, vision around the objective is definitely important. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, actually, is this W Evolve from TW's Kha'Zix. Definitely uh, more team fight oriented, but getting that heavy slow in, in the AoE will be certain, will be very valuable later on. Yeah, I think especially with um, how th these fights are playing out, W Evolve uh, makes a lot of sense, especially because if 
uh, mourned or arched import, dive in and aren't able to get enough CC layered or don't have enough support, that uh, like 90% slow from the W on uh, Kha'Zix might be able to uh, keep them out of position and uh, make a one fight for the side of uh, Grand Ice. Yeah, definitely the case here. Um, we're approaching the point in the game where these uh, second items, maybe even third items, are starting to be completed. We see Locket available for Morn, as well as the Void Staff Zanya is picked up for Argentine Import. Uh, and this is going to be a lot of heavy team fighting early on. We see the Soul Point for Tufts will be available in less than two minutes. So um, at this point, it's probably just farm it out and try and get as much as you can um, to try and finish off those items before this really crucial fight. Yeah. And uh, I think what something Grand Ice needs to do a little bit better is like play around, play like not around the galley, but like make sure uh, Galley isn't able to get so much into the fight as he has been, you know, because he's really been doing a ton. Oh, Constantine might be caught out here. You're gonna have to force um, the flash um, ult out of them, but that's gonna be Jansu taking down Red Strike. Looks like Cubs did a really great job of collapsing there. But now Easy Life might be the one being targeted. That is going to be a dead Mordekaiser as TW with the isolated damage will pick that up. Morn is trying to come and try and uh, contest this here. But there's the package coming in from Yusa. This could be huge. Constantine is already dead. But there's Morn and Argentine into the backline of Brandeis. That's going to be a kill onto TW. And Mr. Krabs is soon to follow. A huge um, Stormbringer might actually turn this fight in. Brandeis' favor and Yusa and Thresh are still left essentially untouched. That's going to be the stopwatch coming out from this side of Argentine, but it's not going to save him, but neither will the Blobs, and that's going to be an ace for the side of Brandeis, actually. A really great fight from Roll the Dice as they are looking for this Baron. Yeah, and that's a really good job from the side of uh, Yusa, uh, destroying the uh, bottom lane of Puffs and making it so really the only damage was the Galio, and uh, as Galio and Zack were able to use their abilities to do as much damage to the TW and uh, grab that kill, they didn't have any like DPS left, so the misfortune of the Corky were able to clean up that fight. No smite available for Brandeis, but it does not matter because Morn is dead. Um, while taking that objective though, the, um, the Mountain Dragon has spawned, and with um, Morn and Argentine coming back up, this objective still could potentially be contested. Constantine might be caught out here, but a nice black shield uh, really negating a lot of the CC coming out from Red Strike. Uh, is chunked to about half and probably will have to back. And with that, it looks like Brandeis and TW will be picking up this dragon, stalling that soul point for just a little bit longer uh, for it to try and stall this game up as they now have a 4,000 gold lead for themselves. Yeah, and I think one important thing about that fight is the fact that Mordekaiser just got caught really early into that. Uh, the Volibear and the Kha'Zix were able to play that super well, uh, layering that CC and GPS to make it so like he didn't even have time to take uh, throw his ultimate. Normally, you see like Mordekaiser doesn't care about having the two one force on him because he has ultimate to make it a one v one, but like, he couldn't even get it off there. So yeah, just got instantly burst. Yet. I don't think the death drum was even used in that fight, but with this Baron buff now available for the side of Brandeis, going to be very impactful, trying to take down these objectives and expand this goldie from the cells. Bullet time actually was cancelled there, I don't know what Thresh um, did there to, to end up having that ultimate be cancelled, but without that, a lot of zoning potential has been negated, but we do have the Stormbringer available for Mr. Krabs, We're going to be able to disable these turrets if they ever want to go for a dive. Looks like top is just gonna have to back off and let these structures fall. Here we go. Um, looks like this inhibitor tower is now under fire. A nice job with a pullback there from Easy Life to try and get those um, cannon minions under the turret range and within reach um, for them to try and take down. Baron buff is still available for another couple of seconds, but I don't think that they're gonna be able to take an inhibitor off of this. Yeah, and uh, it seems like uh, there's a bit of a reset here. The game is uh, kind of coming to a bit of a lull, probably the next like 30 seconds to a minute. Uh, I think overall, Brand is in a really good situation. Uh, they have a really large goal lead. Um, they have hit a bunch of really, uh, really good item completions. Uh, it seems that like Tufts way back into this is uh, finding cold picks, grabbing that soul and uh, using the stats from the soul to really uh, close up that goal lead. And I think a lot of these um, next coming fights for 
Tufts is going to be revolving around Argentine Import and Morn. This mid jungle duo that we saw try and carry that last fight, but it was not enough. But I do think that uh, with the damage, with the goal that they have, um, we're are gonna have to do a really good job frontlining and for Argentine's sake, um, doing a lot of damage in order to try and take the fight win for themselves. Yeah, and one interesting pick up to see is that uh, Morn actually has the lock completed, so maybe with that locket they're able to keep Jansu alive long enough to uh, put that last tip, last bit of damage that uh, the mid jungle duo are, seems to be lacking in order to win those fights. A lot of vision being cleared here for Brandeis. They now have a basically free reign over the red side jungle as um, a lot of these structures have been taken down. Um, we're about 31 minutes into this game. We see that mountain dragon once again spawning in less than two minutes so another big fight will probably unfold here as neither side will give this one up yeah and with all the, the structures uh taken so uh, brand eyes tufts is really uh forced uh closer to their base right now see zana is picked up for both constantine and argentine import as well as easy life so a lot of uh, survivability and playmaking potential is available. We did see Constantine get caught out in that last fight to start it off. Um, but maybe in this next one, if you can get that Soul Shackles combined with the stopwatch, you can really create a, re a lot of zoning potential for the Jumbos to try and space them out, space out Brandeis in this fight. You see both sides actually headed towards the top side of the map. Um, Morn looked for that engage at the Elastic Slingshot, but was not able to find it. And the pants playing the E. Easy Life, though, might catch out Red Strike, and he does. That's going to be. Uh, on the Leona under fire, but Mr. Krabs is here to try and contest. That's going to be the death round pop on to Liliona. And um, with all this uh, tankiness, though, from Red Strike, I don't think he will be actually die. Easy Life pops out of the death round, but there comes that hero's entrance from Argentine Import. This is the fight. Mr. Krabs already pops the Stormbringer, and is going to be forced to flash out of the way. So, a lot of crucial uh, abilities used there for Tufts, but they end up getting that flash there, and Argentine Import is. Looking for more. GW is going to be the target, but whoa! The isolated damage is that fourth shot crit to finish off the Kha'Zix. It's going to be a one for one, but with the jungler down on the side of Brandeis, could be Soul coming in for the side of Tufts. You see the dragon spawning in less than 15 seconds, but look at Yusa. During all that time, ended up taking that bottom inhibitor tower, and Thresh is looking for Constantine. Ends up catching that Morgana out, and doesn't look like he's going to be able to escape. That's going to be a kill going over to this misfortune. So, um, looking at the grand scheme of things, it's going to be three members alive for the side of Tufts compared to the four on Brandeis, but you do have the jungler up for, for um, the Jumbo, so it could be this Dragon Contest, but no. It is going to be Brand evening out the Dragon Count at 3. The next Dragon spawning will be Mountain Soul for one of these two teams. Yeah, and I mean, there we see a little bit more of both Easy Life and Constantine Ballad are being found by the MF really low HP bars, and uh, with the four items that MF has, that's like two autos until they die, so really good job from this portion. Uh, getting some picks while they were trying to reset. This is big. We see Baron started up once again before the side of Brandeis. Morn is not really in position to try and contest, and they're melting this so fast with this double AD carry comp. Morn won't be able to get into smite range, and a brilliant execution there from the side of Brandeis picking up that objective for the second time this game. Yeah, and with those picks they're getting, they're really just like kind of controlling the entire game. Klaus is just uh, left to pick up whatever scraps again, uh, try to Stand the bleeding, and that's just allowing so much space for Brandeis to just pick up the Baron and uh, really extend that gold lead. Gold lead is now at 8,000. It doesn't really seem like it because it seems like Tufts is trying, is really um, putting a big fight up here, nearly um, able to win a lot of these team fights. But at the end of the day, it is Brandeis that has a significant lead and the Baron buff. And with all these turrets down, it looks like they could make a push for an inhibitor on this Baron power play. And if you look at the, the items for the side of Brandeis, there's not only double plans on Misfortune and Quirky, there's also double QSS, so it's going to be really tough for uh, Tufts to win this fight. We were talking about the CC, and that will definitely put a stop to it. Um, Constantine getting a bit of poke out onto Red Strike, but she is very tanky, has that Abyssal Mask for herself, but that's not going to stop Morn from jumping in, along with the Hero's Entrance. This could be a very dead Leona. It looks like the rest of Brandeis are kind of leaving her out to dry. That's going to be the support for Brandeis falling. TW might be actually a little bit out of position too. Soul Shackles will not land on the stun, but on the top side of the fight, we're going to see the QSS actually out from Thresh, canceling 
that death realm and easy life will die in return for that but we do see mr krabs um probably going to fall here going to use the stormbringer that's actually a lot of damage and tw was actually not taken down in that fight this is going to be a huge win for brandeis that's going to be Jansu as well as Easy Life calling. TW is jumping in on this Kha'Zix. He is so strong. Crocking the blobs out of Morn. And when all is said and done, it looks like Brandeis is going to take game one of this match. Yeah, and I think uh, Puff's not really respecting the QSS for that fight. They had a really good pick on the Leona, which I really liked. However, uh, they had Easy Life trying to dive too far into the backline with double QSS. And... Uh, when Mordecai was not in the 1v1, but he's in the 1v3 without the stats from the ultimate, it, it, uh, it's really hard for him to do anything. And uh, the double AD carry was just able to take over that fight with the first damage from the college to support them. Death timers were too long, and that is going to be game one of this series going over to roll the dice. All the towers were actually taken at the end of the day there. Um, but yeah, uh, I. Uh, as you said before that team fighting um, from the side of
Hello and welcome back. We're so sorry. A bit of a change in the draft as Tufts has taken the blue side. We're going to see the Kazakhs picked up for Morn instead of TW. Oh, I'm back. Okay. Never mind. Yeah, Samira is definitely a really strong pickup here for Tufts. Um, and with that Vladimir, um, probably going towards Argentine import, a bit of a change in play styles here for the Jumbos as they end up picking three completely unique champions from that last game. We're going to see Jin Nautilus bot lane for Brandeis as with TW picking up a cane to try and counter this cause. Is it working? Adi, do you mind? Um, we're muted right now. I think. Do you mind re? Adi, can you can you test for a second? Can you just like say something? Hello, hello. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Once again, guys. Um, just a few um issues on our end here at Tufts. Um. Wi-Fi is going a little bit bonkers on us, but that's not going to stop us from having a good time here at the CSL Week 2 between Tufts and Brandeis. Second phase of the bands is already underway. We're going to see Rakan taken away from Constantine um, with uh, Yusa not going to be able to play this Kassadin. Yeah, and I like the Kassadin band here. Uh, Vladimir kind of wants to just sit in lane, you know, suck the blood from some minions and uh, scale up into late game. And Kassadin kind of also just wants to hit that level 16, so... Makes it so if the game plays out the way that he wants to, uh, he won't be contested as hard. Kale once again taken off the table for easy life. Not going to be able to play that champion for the second game in a row. We're going to see what the final ban here for Tufts is. And we do see a bit of a difference here in parity um, on the draft. We don't have a support lock-in for Tufts, but we don't have a mid lane lock-in for the side of Brandeis, which leads to this kind of difference. Um, in the bands here with Galio and Kassin being taken away by the Jumbos. Yeah. One interesting thing I also want to point out is the Kane pick from Brandeis. I'm a little bit biased against uh, Kane in uh, this kind of play as uh, I myself am a TSM fan. And <laughs> if you are a TSM fan, you all remember week one speak of Kane in uh, the summer yep. split, which did not go that well. And it went, it didn't go that well for a few reasons. One of them being that Kane can't do a lot early game. It's basically like, a 4v5. Yes, if there's some duels, he can stack up, but like in almost any 2v2, like against the Vladimir Kha'Zix, against any top laner Kha'Zix, with, uh, against the Brandeis' Kane plus X, the tough side is probably favored. However, if Kane is able to get to 20 minutes with an evolution, uh, preferably the uh, red evolution, uh, Kane will be able to do a lot of fights. So, this pick... It's, a, it's an interesting one. Definitely not uh, the kind of uh, early game uh, pressure pick that uh, we kind of saw from last time. Yusa will be playing the Cassiopeia here in this game, uh, picking that up on the R4 side. We're going, waiting for Easy Life and um, sorry Constantine to finish off this pick. I like the Annie hover, and that is going to be it. Any support coming out from the Jumbos. Constantine. Going to be pulling this out, and Adi, with this latest buffs, going to be a very interesting thing to see here out of Tufts. Yeah, 
I like this. Uh, the level six all-in potential with the Samira Annie is a lot. Uh, if a bear lands on top of Jin with the fourth stun for an Annie, Samira can dash in and do a ton of burst damage, uh, really uh, opening up the bot lane. Yes, yeah, some changes to her E allow Annie to actually place her shield onto other members of her team. So this will really open up more possibilities for Annie's support. And I really am excited to see this. Um, I've never really seen, I haven't seen Annie's support played in competitive since, what well, was it, like season five? So it's going to be really, um, a really interesting pickup here for Constantine Valdor. The final pick will be Nasus actually to lane against the Maokai. I really like this. This is a champion that, um, sorry, that um, Mr. Krabs is very comfortable on. And playing against a tank like Maokai will definitely be really well um, off. Really, uh, sorry, really well off for the side of Brandeis. So looking at overall these drafts, I really like the late game scaling on the side of Brandeis as well as Tufts even. Both sides are really probably going to try and look to scale for late here. Yeah, I mean, basically everywhere the ball in is just scaling. We have the Kha'Zix, Vladimir, uh, Maokai on the side of Tufts versus the Kane, Cassio, and As. It's, uh, it's definitely going to be very interesting. Uh, the Cassio, is, I really like that pick because it has the ability to apply some pressure, which doesn't matter too much because of Vladimir, as Vladimir has decently uh, easy job of uh, a decently uh, good job of uh, Sorry, uh, there were some uh, issues with uh, the League of Legends client, but uh, I'm back now. Uh, decently good job of like scaling up and um, contesting the Vladimir late. We're going to see, yeah, once again, really great comps coming out from both sides. Game two is about to be under underway here. And once again, Tufts is going to be looking to try and come back from this 1-0 deficit here um, in this game. Um, and yeah, it looks like we're going to start this game in just a little bit. Uh, we're going to take a quick break um, before we head into game two, um, just to try and get everything set up. And so don't go anywhere. We're going to have Tufts versus Brandeis game two right after this.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Summoner's Rift for game two between Tufts University and Roll the Dice here from Brandeis. I am once again Andrew, joined here by Adi. And Adi, we got an exciting game too. Brandeis taking a 1 0 lead here in this best of three series. And we're going to see a very interesting bet, well, level one here. Red Strike has the Dredge Line available. And it looks like he might actually flash on to John Stu. Going to be forced to start W there. Really good work and really fast reaction time there from Samira to avoid getting hooked there. Yeah, one interesting thing, uh, I don't know if uh, Chad can see this, but uh, the uh, Jin on the side of Brandeis has definitely noticed this. Samira has exhaust and not heal the bot lane, which means they might be going for a very aggressive bot lane with the exhaust ignite. Uh, one interesting thing about the Samira any bot lane is it's really easy to set up uh, all in or a trade just because of uh, what Samira does. Samira, um, if she auto attacks a stunned target, it knocks them up and uh, dashes her towards them a bit. And so uh, with the uh, uh, point and click stun essentially from Annie, they can easily set up a fast uh, trader all in, meaning they have a lot of kill pressure. GW will be starting on the Raptors this game. A typical start here for the game, while Morn and the rest of Tufts will be leashing here on this red buff. So yeah, as you said before, Adi, this Samira Annie is going to be a really heavy kill lane. Exhaust on the Samira will really warrant a lot of uh, caution coming out of Brandeis early on. We can see off the bat, uh, at least the ball is going for a little bit of cheese. Oh, yeah, brilliant job there. Oh, but actually gets the Electrocute proc from Thresh. Really good trade, actually, in favor of Tufts. Uh, so despite Red Strike going in first there, nice job denying a lot of those projectiles from John Su's W, um, as well as the Electrocute proc there from Annie, and that ends up with Thresh at a, a lower health margin. Yeah, it seems that uh, Brandass is going for a bit of trade. Oh, uh, it's like, uh, Jess is dashing him at level 2. Flash W, that's the Ignite gonna be popped onto Red Strike. No electric was available with that final auto to take him down, but that's going to be a summoner spell being used there. But there's the re-engage there! Big kill lane as we said, but it's going to be Jansu falling! First Thresh will pick up the first blood for himself, while well, Constantine will get one onto Red Strike in return. So overall, a 1 for 1, but ADC, ADC for support, I think that is much better off for Brandeis. Yeah, and it seems like Tuss uh, uh, was trying to use that kill pressure, but they executed a little bit poorly because uh, when Annie flashed forward, she didn't have her stun, which means uh, they weren't able to secure the kill in the auto immediately. And um, Samira uh, flashed in after, uh, or dashed in after um, getting the knockup on Jin, but she didn't have enough damage to easily uh, finish out the kill. And uh, while the W does stop projectiles, while the W is being cast, you can't like use other abilities and it doesn't block tower shots so uh she just kind of like sat there for a bit took a tower shot and wasn't able to get enough damage to kill the gym yeah and that's a little bit of that overextension that we were talking about jansu and constantine knowing that a lot of their strength here in this bot lane was with an early engage went a little bit too hard for it and ended up getting punished um uh so yeah jansu is actually still ahead in cs but uh, Thresh will be ahead in gold for the time being. We see Morn sitting here on this top side um, on the mid lane looking for a gank onto Yusa, but it's not going to be happen. Uh, something I do want to mention here is this top side matchup between Mr. Krabs and Easy Life. The Nasus on the side of Mr. Krabs actually opted for the Summoner Spellbook and started with Ghost and Flash, so no teleport available early on. Yeah, and I think the spellbook is uh, something that's been relatively standard recently, but it looks like Warren's ganking top lane. Yeah, the gank on the top side. Um, too tanky of a, of a K9 there, as Mr. Krabs will get away with only popping the ghost. So, yeah, really good job of escaping that gank. And, but once again, as we said, we force um, Mr. Krabs out of lane. That was a big wave that he was um, pushing up there for easy life, but we will be maybe punished here without having that teleporter around. Yeah, and uh, I like to see uh, Morn trying to show some uh, pressure in the top lane, just uh, make it so the Nasus can't just uh, free scale. Yeah, but it's going to be really hard for that to happen, honestly. Um, Maokai is definitely not somebody you think about when you think strong laner who can punish a Nasus, which I think is a large reason why Mr. Krabs opted for this pick. Um, 
not going to be able to get punished early on. Has an early Kindle gem for himself. Really going to be super tanky and hard to kill for the side of Easy Life. Another dredge line will go short, but here comes TW coming in with the gank here. Red Strike is going to be chunked down early, but Constantine is going to be the first to fall. Jansu has got it up the ranks here, and there's TP coming in from Argentine, finishing him off. That's going to be TW falling, so a two for one in favor of Tufts, and then brilliant teleport there from Argentine import picks up a kill for himself. Yeah, that was pretty greedy from side of Brandeis. I mean, they had no idea where Aaron or where Morn was, as Morn was in the bot lane coming back to the bot side. And uh, they, yeah, the TP with the Vladimir just uh, came in and uh, turned that like 3v2 under uh, Tuff's tower to uh, 4v3. And a really aggressive build picked up here for Argentine Import, going for the straight up large rod. Um, going for probably what's going to be a spellbinder early on um, uh, as the Vladimir. Um, but yeah, very interesting pickup for himself, but he's going to be very strong, have a lot of AP. That's going to be Mountain Dragon picked up on the bot side for Morn and the side of Tufts as um, Infernal will be next. Yeah, and one other interesting thing to know is that in the bot side with atomization, uh, Jin decided to go for the Cull, whereas Samira has the full BS sword, and uh, while obviously Jin will be able to have more gold laying bags and be able to get more items, Samira is going to have like a lot more uh, laying pressure just because like, she didn't buy the Cull. Yeah, and and that's kind of an unfortunate circumstance here from Thresh. He, he got the early kill, so took a reset, got the early Cull, but because of that, is not able to pick up that BF sword before Jon's 2 is. So, kind of a strange trade-off there, uh, but I think at the moment, it is still going to have... Um, actually, yeah, the gold is probably basically even on both sides, but that, yeah, once again, BS Sword unable to be picked up early on. Yeah. Uh, and then, again, you talked about the large rod in mid lane. The fact that Vladimir has that kill is going to be really big for him, as uh, he's going to be able to scale a lot more comfortably into this mid to late game. Early trades going on back and forth. Not a lot of early um, scale. I'm sorry, early skirmishes going on. Other than that, um, those antics in the bot lane. And just looking at the team comps for both teams, it makes a lot of sense why both teams are content with just farming it out. Nice trade there from Yusa, getting that poison out onto Argentine import. Going to be able to heal that back up, but certainly um, a really great job to punish. Trade in the bot side though, Jansu is going to end up dashing in onto Red Strike and Ignite's going to be landing there and that's going to be a kill onto the support for Brandeis. Easy Life is getting ganked up in the top side and that's going to be Mr. Krabs picking up a kill for himself, a huge kill going over to the Nasus early on. So a one for one trade on opposite sides of the map, but um, it's going to be kills for Jansu and a kill for Mr. Krabs. Curtain Call opens up but not going to be able to find um, a kill onto either member. Oh, very close there. And not going to be here, but there comes more and to finish him off the W will be the final blow and that is going to be a dead Jin as Morn picks up a kill for himself making the trade overall two for one. Yeah that's really well played from the bot lane of uh, Tuss. Uh, not only like chaining the uh, stun and the knockout really well but also uh, using the W to stop that dredge line when uh, Samira dashed in uh, making it so they really had no tools to disengage that fight and turn it. Uh, but again another thing to talk about is uh, the kill on the top lane. Nasus level 6 with the Sheen has a decent amount of kill pressure. The game is able to come top and uh, just uh, hit away that Maokai until they died. GW on this Kane is going for an invade onto the um, blue buff of Morn. Kane is going to be very strong. Has a bunch of ganks already under his belt. So he's working up those orbs a lot better than Spika did on TSM back in that game. <laughs> so I do think that CW will be a bit more impactful than that TS than the TSM jungler um, in this game at least, as he's probably nearing that transformation already. Yeah, and the uh, fact that uh, it's a cane means he can like power farm, and uh, so if Mort isn't able to like get a ton of uh, pressure on other parts of the map, then this cane might be able to run away with the game. Oh, but speaking of ganks, there's another one on to Easy Life. Maokai has that huge wave pushed up and it's going to be the end of him. And that's going to be TW or Mr. Krabs. No, he's going to give it over to the Nasus. And this is really scary if you're Tufts University. Getting two kills early on onto a Nasus. Already has the Sheen, already has the Kindle Gem, 20% CDR, and is working towards 150 stacks here with less than 10 minutes into this game. Going to be a really scary dog later on. Yeah. 
looking at just Jansu, I mean, he's not playing Vayne, he's not playing Ash, someone who has the ability to kite and uh, do a lot of like tank shredding damage. He's playing Samira, a uh, very short range, wants to get up into your face AC, which does not do well into an Asus. Yeah, and this is just um, kind of um, a fault in the draft. If you get gank in this bot, uh, sorry, an engage. In the bottom sides, Johnson is going to flash forward, has the ultimate death, and that's going to be the kill, double kill, going over to the Tufts bot lane. So it looks like the Samira pick is really working out for Tufts as they pick up another kill onto the Brandeis bot lane. Meanwhile, in the top side jungle, we see Morn and TW going for a bit of a skirmish here, but that's a huge wave on that bottom side, and Tibbers is helping them out with these turret plates, and this is going to be a huge lead going towards um, Johnson and Constantine. That's kind of literally what I was talking about with the uh, Tibbers ulti the stun and then just the chaining with the Samira is just so much damage and uh, I feel like Tufts is really executing that well. They may have made misstep a little bit early, but now they're really doing Yeah, despite that early misstep, um, looks like they were really able to um, kind of fight back from that. And still, that once you hit level 6, that Samira to any combo is just really... Um, Hard to beat here. So a bit of a more tanky build actually coming out from Constantine. Goes for what seems to be a Shirelia's early on, but we might have to talk about that a little bit later as we see Rift spawn and pop down the mid lane, getting two plays for themselves. Uh, but Brandis is unable to capitalize on that and try and punish him for it. You can see again Kane's uh, in uh, Morin's topside jungle, just power farming and just look at the far numbers, 87 to 68. With the uh, three uh, three kill participation already, the cane is putting in a lot of work. And so, despite the gold being in favor of Tusk for now, this game is looking more and more promising for Brandis as the minutes go on. We have a really strong Nasus now at two and zero with components of Triforce currently in inventory. And you have a cane that is once again ganking easy life. I, this is a poor tree. He's going to get get chopped down by Nasus' axe, and this could probably be enough to transform him. Hold on, it looks like TW might take an extra tower shot, but no. That's going to be the dead tree, and that's going to be another kill going towards Mr. Krabs. Just getting funneled so much gold that he now gets free reign over the tower place. Yeah, and, uh, this is a little bit of what Brandis was doing uh, last game as well, putting a lot of uh, pressure with that 2v2 in the top lane, or I guess this is more like a 2v1, we haven't seen Krabs in the top too much, but... Ooh. Morn jumping in and taking down Yusa there in the middle lane after picking up that dragon for himself. Getting a 2-0 dragon lead for Tufts. This soul win condition, once again, it could be the soul win condition for Tufts at this point in the game as you have this fed Nasus and Kane. Yeah, and it seems like it's really going to be is the a lead in the top in the bottom three lanes for uh, Tufts greater than the lead in the top three lanes for uh or the, the top two players for Brandeis. Rust already picked up here for TW. Much quicker than Speak Up, but that's another engage on the bot lane. The Tibbers coming in once again. Ignite's taking on to Thresh. Might be able to drop, but no. Getting away by the skin of his teeth. And so another really good engage by the tough spot lane. Not ending up with any kills for themselves there, but they will get a lot of pressure for themselves. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, TW is just wreaking havoc over Argentine and Port Morn. Looks like he wants a bit of the action though, as he goes in with the spikes, not going to be able to uh, re-engage there. But yeah, once again, this Samira, uh, any combo, not going to be able to take down the bot lane there, but is still super strong as they're working for maybe a first turret here. Yeah, and they still got both stones from Jin there. Okay? It's next time that Tibbers is up uh, and Jin over says, it's probably going to turn into another kill. And it looks like first tower will be taken on the next wave. Turrets have fallen, which means that the resistances on the towers um, from um, the plates being gone have vanished, which means that will be a really quick first tower picked up from the side of Jansu and Constantine. So despite that early mishap um, at, at the about two minute mark in this game, it looks like the bot lane of Tufts is starting to take over. Yeah, and uh, the mid lane is seeming like kind of even. Uh, Vladimir has like a lead for the kills, but uh, I think both sides are just comfortable like farming it out for right now. And once again, this Nasus is just so strong right now. Has so much damage, has all, all the components of Trinity Force completed, and at the 15 minute mark is nearing 3 
hundred stacks just reaches that with the killing of that cannon minion. And Adi, just looking at this, if, if Nasus has 300 stacks right now, it's only going to go up and up and up. And I can't even imagine how strong he's going to be later on in this game. Yeah, and again, I'm talking about like there is Fed Smear, Fed Nasus. Seems like the Fed Nasus is kind of going to uh, win out on that one. As Smear doesn't really have the tools to kite or like play long range as we need to do to fight that Nasus. We're gonna see who's the stronger carry here. Jansu is going to actually get the ultimate off the Mr. Krabs. Fury of the Sands is available, but that's gonna be a shutdown onto the bear, onto the dog. Sorry, You're gonna, Kane's gonna get one onto Constantine in return, but that's gonna be two kills going over to Jansu. Double kill for the Samir and Adi. We might have spoke a bit too soon, as that's gonna be Nasus falling in return uh, against the Samir. Yeah, I and mean, that was just a really good rotation of tops, you know, punishing the two v two there or the. Uh, Top player, the jungler for uh, trying to push oh. up again and uh, getting a nice right. pick. Speaking of good rotations, another one. Morn and Argentine doing so much work, and they end up killing off the bottom lane of Brandeis. That's going to be four members um, in succession killed off for the jumbos, and all of a sudden, three thousand gold, almost two. Th sorry, two thousand gold lead now for the jumbos, nearing two of the that second turret um, taken down, and all of a sudden, Tuffs is in the lead here. Yeah, I mean, Tufts just seems super comfortable with how their team is playing right now. We have Morn's Kha'Zix, we have Archon Import just playing the safe mage, you know, the Vladimir who is like doing a ton of damage right now with the Samira anti bot lane. Uh, it seems like Tufts is uh, very comfortable with the way the game is going, very comfortable with their picks, and very comfortable to K-Control. And yeah, this Samira is going to be scary, tank or not, it seems like. There, the Essence Fever completion has a second BF Sword in inventory, and it's just so far ahead of Thresh at the moment, nearing 2,000 gold ahead. Yeah, and there is a Trinity Force with, like, like you say, like, a 300 oh, stacks. Oh, there's Flash in the bin lane. Flash Alt Tibbers, that is the power of that Samira. Annie is doing so much burst, and that's the dash coming in from Jansu as well, combined with the passive and the E. Just so much gap closing available for that Samir to pick up another kill on to the enemy bot lane. And it looks yeah. like Tufts is potentially looking for another pick here onto Yusa, but she's gonna be able to back out with Twin Fangs, or maybe not. There's that Hemo Plague actually landing there. No, Miasma will be able to zone off Argentine import. Uh, but it looks like here in the top side, Easy Life will once again be caught out here. This is just free pickings here for Brandeis as that's going to be one final Q coming out from TW to finish him off. Four deaths now in a row for this Maokai, but in return, as we said, a lot of focus on the top side. That's going to be another dragon picked up. Our action is going on back and forth here. I can't even keep track. Petrifying Gaze will not hit onto Argentina. Really good job standing back, and that is going to be a kill onto the Cassiopeia. So they got soul point for the side of Tusk. We do have another kill going towards Nasus, but it's going to be a tower in the bottom lane picked up here and with soul point this is going to be very scary for Brandeis later on in this game. Yeah and I think Tusk is just point to say like, yeah uh, we have an 4 battle pack but every single else is winning and we're going to keep pushing those advantages with the inhibitor tower in the ball lane being taken down. Another thing to point out is like yeah there is a Triforce and like a lot of uh, stacks in the Nasus but Samira is really bad and there's really only the Bramble Vest inside the Nasus to try to protect himself with it. so if there's not enough tankiness on the side of the Nasus you know Samira will still do a ton of damage. And this is what we're talking about. I mean, despite being 0 and 4, I do think that Easy Life is doing his best playing on the weak side of the map here. Um, could his score, his score could his score in CS could be a whole lot worse if he was playing this little, um, poorly, even. Um, but yeah, really great job by him. Even though he's 0 and 4, garnering a lot of pressure and only dying um, four times. I mean, not too much there, but Mr. Krabs. Certainly is strong, but um, on this counter pick, there's only so much that this Maokai can do. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, if there's ever a time for Brandeis to be like, okay, we gotta see if our King Nasus can uh, match up, it's gotta be now. And I think that's what they're uh, singling as uh, they send the Cassiopeia into the top lane to match the Maokai. Meja is actually picked up for Argentine Import. He's feeling good about this one. Already nine stacks on the book. I mean, could be looking for more. We see. Um, both both teams kind of going towards this dragon pit. As we said before, soul point for Tufts 
is going to be huge. And so with three minutes left, vision around this Drake is going to be super important. You see Argentine potentially getting caught out. There's a the dredge line. Pool is probably going to be available. Yeah, there's the Hemoplank as well. And the healing is going to be massive, but there's that Umbral Trespass from TW. Stopwatch has been popping a nice two-man knockup coming out of the cane, but here comes the re-engage. There's that ultimate coming in from Johnson, and he is just melting everybody on Brandeis. Curtain Call will be doing some work, but not enough. Mr. Krabs ended up getting another kill for himself, but it's not going to be enough to win the fight for them. And meanwhile, in the top side, Morn will pick up another kill on to Cass. And Mr. Krabs is running for the hills, but he is running the wrong direction. Going over the tower might actually get the execute. Yep, ends up picking that up. But either way, four kills, three kills, I guess, of gold for one um, for the side of Tufts. Brilliant play. Yeah. And I just want to talk about that beautiful execution from the Kha'Zix there. The uh, weaving around, dodging out the petrifying gaze, just really well played and showing that, you know, Morn really is a very good Kha'Zix. And speaking of that, uh, speaking of, um, on the other side of that fight, we had Jansu absolutely melting members of Brandeis there with the Inferno trigger. Once you get to that S rank, going to be doing so much damage once you get into the middle of the team and it looks like nobody on the side of Brandis really had the opportunity to try and stop him no hard CC was really issued onto the Samira ended up getting that full channel out and so yeah really great job by John Su getting into the fight finding the right opportunity and capitalizing on it yeah and that's really probably like I said last game Argentine import did you know he took the Nautilus alt Nautilus Q uh Thresh W or sorry not Thresh W uh Kane W and so uh they weren't able to kill him, and so when the Zanya came up, or the stopwatch like uh, came off, the entire team was there, and Samira was just able to destroy the entire team as they had no cooldowns left. 21 minutes into this one, and we now see a 4,000 gold lead here for the Jumbos. Certainly a better showing early on than they had in this last game. Wow, look at that damage from Mr. Krabs' Q. Um, Argentine will probably be able to um, heal that back up. But yeah, this Nas is still going to be incredibly scary. Flash actually issued on, um, used from Thresh to try and escape that Tibber result. Um, yeah, really scary. As, as if you see Constantine, you basically have to have your finger on that F key, as any spell could probably issue your doom with, between him and Jansu. Yeah, uh, I think like he's been uh, picked by enough of those uh, Flash Rs from any. Oh, oh, but there's a the pick on the other side, and that's going to be Annie dropping. Constantine Valdor already issued a Tibbers. They knew he didn't have it. And with that, it looks like Brandeis is going on the offensive. They pull out the Rift Herald, and they issue the Curtain Call. The W from Jansu will try and block out some of the damage, but not enough. Nice dredge line coming out from Red Strike to end up taking him down. That is going to be the bot lane of Tufts falling. And with that, we see the timing here on the Drake is about to respawn. So it doesn't look like Tufts will be able to pick up the Cloud Soul at this point. Yeah, really good job from uh, Brent. I was just getting like the edge of a couple of those pick tools onto the bot lane, and uh, you know, two like oh, Morin. Samira definitely goes in. So, oh, Morin went way too far trying to steal that. As he knew it was over as soon as he jumped in way too late. That's going to be a dead Kha'Zix, and it looks like the rest of Tufts is trying to join him in the Death Realm. It seems like Argentine Import is going in a nice E, trying to buy some time, picking up a lot of damage. But there's Easy Life coming back in, but there's its Flash W coming out from Constantine, and it looks like Tufts is turning this fight around. That's going to be four immediately dead from the Brandeis, and it looks like a Flash Q coming out from Constantine will end up finishing off Mr. Krabs. There it is. No, just barely escaping with his life, but not for long. Argentine Enforcement <laughs> coming with the E, and that is the ace for Tufts. I don't know how they did it, but somehow the Jumbos come out with a team fight win, and they are looking for the Baron. Yeah, I'm just gonna say this one more time. Uh, Argentine importative. Uh, like, <laughs> to be fair, the entire team played that well. Yeah, uh, it was a little bit scuffed with um, Aaron coming in from the Dragon Pit after uh, the Smite had already been issued and the Dragon had already died. However, he did soak up the Kane ultimate, and so the fact that Kane only had the Q and W and Lightmare was able to like weave around and getting his Q and W down until everyone was pretty low, plus the uh, re-engage from Prophecy Valdor with the Tibbers back up just uh, meant that they had a lot of AoE, a lot of damage, and were able to melt some grand dice. That is the Baron Nasher picked up for the Jumbos now at 24 minutes into this game they hold a four and a half thousand gold lead over Brandeis looking to even this series out at one to one. And uh 
If you look at the inventory for uh, the Vladimir, that is a rabbit on 17 <laughs> stack Magis and uh, the other 120 AP item uh, sitting in his inventory. So uh, that Vladimir is going to hit hard. Argentina Spell Imports Liner, that's is now yeah. sitting at 634 AP, and honestly, that is just insane this early into the game. With that death cap, with that Medjides, with the Spellbinder, going to be very, very potent in these later team fights as he just continues to get stronger. Yeah, I gotta say, as an ADC main, I really do not want to be sitting in those Jin's shoes right now. <laughs> yeah, Argentina has done a really good job of diving into the backline, picking up a lot of damage onto the squishy members of Brandeis. So, but if you look at um, some of the positives here, we do see this NAS is, is still pretty strong and is continuing to stack up. So, I think what um, Brandeis has to do to try, to try and win this is try to find picks like this. Argentine import might be caught out here. That is a huge chunk of damage coming out from the Q. But look at this. Despite they don't even end up killing the Vladimir and actually get a kill onto Thresh in return, that's going to be another kill for Morn as that's going to be a tower falling and Argentine import is back to half HP. It looks like the pick did not end up working out for Brandeis as the inhibitor tower is now on fire. Yeah, just the split push from Vladimir is so scary because if you're not able to kill him, like, not there, uh, whoever is sitting in the mid lane is under a lot of pressure and uh, now that inhibitor tower is about to fall. Here's a re-engage here. Easy Life coming in with the W to try and lock down TW, and that is it. Argentine is now on a killing spree with three straight kills, and there comes that ultimate from John Su melting everybody on Brandeis. That's going to be four members instantly down. Double kill picked up from John Su Samira. Curtain Call is going to be trying to stall some time from Thresh, but it's not going to um, be able to stop that. 1v4, that's not... A question. Four might be Jin's favorite number, but not in this scenario. That is the ace again coming out from Tufts, and with 27 minutes, Tufts University will even this series at 1 to 1. Yeah, and that was just a really good performance inside of Tufts, like giving up the top lane, saying that, you know what, Nasus and Kane can do whatever they want. We're just going to utilize that Samira Annie. We're going to uh, keep that Vladimir strong, and we're going to take over the game from the other two lanes. It looks scary from the Jumbos at first. It looked like Mr. Krabs Nasus and the Kane scaling up would have really caused a big problem. But at the end of the day, a really nice job from Tufts, um, Morn, and Argentine Import, and Jansu, and Constantine, and heck, even Easy Life too. He died a little bit at the beginning, but he ended up going from 0 4 0 to 3 4 and 8, picking up a lot of heavy teamfight contributions for himself and uh, helping Tufts pick up that win. Yeah. And I really like the. Uh change of pace from Tufts there in that game, uh, going for a slightly more uh, diverse comp with uh, the amount of damage, making it so that they have a lot of uh, pick potential, but also a lot of like damage from uh, different members, meaning that uh, they weren't so reliant on having the fight play out exactly the way they wanted to to uh, uh, win a team fight, like we saw in that uh, like second or third to last fight where Vladimir uh, was able to uh, do a ton of damage and essentially a 3v5. And this is such an exciting development here in the support meta in the CSL. Any support being picked up by Constantine Valdor combined with the Samira was just such a monster in the bottom lane, picking up kill after kill after kill onto Thresh and Red Strike. Yeah. And I think going into next game, I just want to see uh, what Brandeis is going to do to uh, try to adjust. We saw uh, Tops adjust from the first game and they adjusted uh, pretty well and... Uh, now it's Brandeis' turn to see if they can uh, turn their uh, this 1-1 one -one into a 2-1 for them. The series is on the line here in Game 3. Another um, very important match coming up your way. But we are going to take a quick break before we head into Game 3 of Tufts versus Brandeis. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with Champion Select.
Welcome back to game three here between Brandeis and Tufts University. The series is tied at one to one. And with game three on the line in this best of three, whoever wins this game will take home the victory. I am Andrew Howe, once again, joined by Adi Palparik. And here, Adi, we see Tufts going for the red side once again. So this is a coin flip to determine game three of side selection. And so Brandeis ended up on the blue side and Tufts ended up on the red side. So early on, we're going to see stuff similar to the draft that we saw in game one, presumably. Yeah, and there's the uh, Shen ban, which is pretty standard. Shen has been banned all three games. The Vladimir ban, which I think is mad respect for Brandeis because uh, Archie and Import did really good in week one and did really good in that last game. So we'll see what he goes on this time. Senna taken off the board for Tufts to finish out the ban phase, not wanting um, the AD carry of Thresh on the side of Brandeis to be picking up that Senna. Um, a quick note that we have to issue before we finish off this, before we continue talking about this draft. Brandeis jungler has been subbed out. TW will be replaced by Blast in this next game. A bit of a change in play styles here. Um, but yeah, once again, no more TW and instead we'll have Blast for game three on the side of Brandeis. But some quick Quickly off the bat, one thing that really pops out to me in these first two picks is that Samira Annie once again being picked up for Tufts. Yeah, and I think especially seeing the Ezreal already picked up first pick inside of Brandeis, they're relatively uh, comfortable picking in the ball in into that. Like, yes, Ezreal has the dash, the extra second flash to make himself a little more safe, but the kill pressure from Samira Annie is just uh, too powerful, and I really like them picking it again. It's going to be interesting to see if Brandeis finds an answer to this really potent, really strong bot lane on Tufts. It's going to be Ezreal Alistar to be the answer to the Samira Annie. I don't really know how the Alistar will really fit into this. Maybe just being tankier will prevent a lot of the early deaths coming out. But I really do like the Ezreal, as you said, Adi, with those escapes. Yeah, and I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I don't really like the Alistar pick too much. Like, yes, at level six, Alistar having the. Uh, cleanse on his ultimate will make it so that there's uh, less kill pressure but early yeah early earlier than that without the uh after the wqr used from alistair it's really hard for him to get out so i think um if he overextends uh annie and Samira could definitely punish him and one thing that was left on the table here without tw on stage here for game three we're going to see kha'zix falling all the way to r3 so morn will end up picking that up a lot later in the draft than maybe previously expected but yeah once again three comfort picks that tufts won within game two being uh, available for them in game three yeah and uh i don't know if i like this too much from the side of brandeis uh we saw what morgan could do with the cause last game and we saw this mary annie ball in and uh unless they have like a really good idea of how to counter these picks um I don't know about uh, giving them back to Tuss. We're heading into the second ban phase here. We're going to see Set and Kale taken away. Easy Life has been targeted with this Kale multiple times, all three games actually. Um, and this Kale will not be available for the Tuss top laner um, in this series entirely. Yeah, and I personally think that with the uh, Kha'Zix, Annie, and Samira already picked, I, I expect Malpai Duty again. You know, good, reliable tank, you know. Probably lose lane to the volley bear, but uh, the other lanes can get ahead. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, I agree. Something tank, something more on the tanky side. We do see the Shen already banned away um, for Easy Life, but yeah, with this high DPS co team composition, especially with that Samira, probably something more tanky would be the solution here. We're gonna see Tufts trying to round out their final ban phase here with Lee Sin being taken away from Blast. So I haven't actually gotten really to look at Blast. Um, champion pulls but just as i take a look at that the two most played champions in his solo queue have been lee sin and set so really smart play here coming out from tufts to try and ban those away yeah uh i think one uh big thing that this comp needs is uh something for argentine import to excel on so with the vladimir gone away i want to see if uh he will go for one of the more carry mid laners or just back to galio duty echo will be the final ban taken away <laughs> by Brandeis. So yeah, I, I do think that I like Argentine Import on something more heavily in damage. While we did see him do pretty well on the Galio, it ended up with him not really being able to carry the team at the end of the day. And so um, with this mid lane pick, maybe we can save the mid lane pick for last. We already see the Volley Bear picked up for Brandeis. So maybe I, I'm expecting to see Easy Life pick up a uh, pick for himself here in the top side. Yeah. 
Uh, the Echo Band is uh, really interesting. Uh, Argentine Import hasn't played too much of it in CSL yet, but uh, I know that he has played a lot of Echo, and he's pretty proficient in it, so I like the band from Brandeis. Yeah, Argentine Import is really um, <laughs> able to play a lot of different champions here, it, despite um, what his OPGG might look like, just playing a lot of Bard. It, um, he's shown time and time again that he can play almost anything here. Um, so it's going to be Really interesting to see what he picks up here. This is being a bit delayed here on the side of Tusk um, before they end up picking here. Um, but it's going to be a Malphite lock-in for Tufts. As you said, Adi, looking for more of that tankiness to try and match all of the DPS that they've already drafted. Yeah, and uh, it doesn't matter uh, how behind Malphite is. His ultimate will always do the same thing in every fight, which is uh, knock up a bunch of people and to do... Uh, Provide for a lot of engage, and with the uh, Annie and Samira, that can uh, really be a lot of combo. Yeah, and while I don't think that Malphite is necessarily a good matchup into Volley Bear, I think it's one of those matchups where, if played right, Malphite can lose gracefully or even go even um, into the volley, making him strong enough to try and um, excel later on in the game. We're going to see Silas actually picked up for the side of Brandeis. So a really interesting interaction here. We see the Malphite immediately countered by the Silas. And let's let's um, not hold, let's not uh, take this off the table here. M these are all flex picks. Silas and Volibear can both go jungle. Um, and with the Orianna lock-in, it seems like one of them will. Yeah. Uh, de very, definitely very interesting. I think the Silas is probably going to the jungle. Uh, it's a pick that's actually been relatively popular like uh somewhere in the middle of the season and uh, i think with Malphite and stuff like that uh pretty good pick yeah and i wouldn't be surprised to see the silas go top either i do think that um um matching up against the Malphite is really good for the silas um as Malphite will not be able to really build that much armor um to try and counter this and we're going to see cassidy locked in finally here for Argentine import. We were talking about him playing a carry, and if I've ever, this is a carry if I've ever seen one. Yeah, it has similar uh, scaling to Vladimir. It probably scales a little bit later than the Vladimir. You need to hit the infamous level 16 power spike to take over a fight, but level 1 level 6, you still will be pretty strong. If you can get ahead, you might be able to take over this. Overall, I really like the draft coming out from the Jumbos here. We have a lot of really great team fight potential and a lot of early game too. We have the Annie Samira, as we said before, trying to carry them through that early game and get them to that late game spot that they want to be in. Yeah, and uh, the team fight for Brandeis looks uh, pretty standard. They have a pretty good composition. Like, it's not like there's no uh, Samira Annie on it, but it seems pretty standard. And I think. Uh, it's going to come out of execution. We're going to be waiting for some confirmation to see where these picks end up going on the side of Brandeis. And it looks like that Brand that Silas will be going to Mr. Krabs in the top lane to counter that Malphite. And I do think that is a good pickup. And I think that um, seeing, um, sorry, that seeing Blast on the Volley Bear uh, more... And with that, I think we're about to head into a quick break. We got game three between Tufts and Brandeis coming up right at the end of this quick break that we're going to have uh, just from some spectator delay stuff and things like that. So don't go anywhere. We're going to have a big matchup here. The winner will take the series between Brandeis and Tufts. Don't go anywhere.
Hello and welcome to Summoner's Rift, ladies and gentlemen, for the final time today. We've got game three of Brandeis versus Tufts University. Once again, I am Andrew, joined by Adi. And Adi, once um, in this final game, in this best of three, um, definitely going to be a very exciting one with the new jungler here. Blast coming in once again for TW. Yeah. I think uh, after game two, I'm a little bit favoring Tufts in this one just because how they show they can execute this kind of composition. But I still think Brandeis has some tools to uh, turn this one in their favor. So unlike the past two games, we're not going to see a red side bottom lane invade. Uh, instead, we're just going to see a, a bit of a normal standard five point. Um, and, and yeah, but one thing I do want to mention, Adi, is in the last time we had an invade, Ended up getting um, having some stuff traded back and forth, which ended up um, with Jansu and Constantine probably um, unfavored in that last trade. You ended up having Con Jansu ended up having to start W, um, and that probably led to their downfall in that early level two play. But now without that, I think this could be really good for them. Yeah, it's that Q early are and uh, if they can get that EQ level two, uh, they can definitely uh, have a lot more kill pressure really early. Bottom side starts for both junglers. Argentine import coming in from the mid lane, getting that Q off to start off, and just probably just gonna be trying to farm until he hits that higher level. Yeah, I think he's gonna have as easy of a time in this matchup as he has in the past, just because Cassidy is a lot uh, less resilient than like Vladimir, but uh, we'll see what happens. Another interesting interaction Annie has the largest, longest auto attack range in the game. Which really allows her to get those spell thieves procs off really, really easily. And already we see the electrocute um, proc onto onto Thresh, and this is just the power of that any support. That we're talking about. Yeah. Um, in the top lane, it seems um, you know relatively standard. Uh, Silas probably has a little bit of advantage, like all in general, but Malphite has the ability to kind of uh, throw back some press, so. Ray's coming down on the bot lane, no stun available for Constantine just yet, but there it is! That's gonna be Ignite not getting popped actually onto Red Strike, ending up flashing away to try and counter that, and Thresh could be looking for the counter engage, that is first blood, and he's looking for more, flashing forward to try and land those more Mystic shots, and that is going to be Constantine falling down, first kill of the game, disaster striking for Tufts early on. Yeah, I think for that. Well, uh, they put a lot of stuff on the Alistair, and uh, they were just kind of caught in a bad position as they just kept free firing without uh, much from uh, John Sircos and Balder to hit back with. But one thing to talk about, though, is that's a little bit what I was talking about with the Alistair. You know, Alistair does WQ, and then uh, he can't really get out that much, and Cost uh, and Balder and John are almost able to turn a kill. However, uh, it did end up going in the favor of uh, the Ezreal. Both jungles around this top side scuttle. Um, but anyway, yeah, Adi, as I was saying, um, taking a look at, at the bottom side players for Tufts, the Exhaust and Ignite, both of those offensive summoner spells were not used to try and contest that fight. As we see Mr. Krabs actually getting the better of a trade against Easy Life, forcing the flash out of the Malphite. But yeah, I feel like if the Ignite was maybe popped on the, on, onto the Alistar, maybe even the Exhaust to get an extra auto out, could have been uh, a lot better. Um, for the side of Tusk, but at the end of the day, that's a that's a dead Annie, and that's a, um, gonna be happy a kill onto Thresh early on in this lane. Yeah, I agree. I think with taking the double aggressive summoner spell, they need to be a little more aggressive with it because uh, man, they ended up losing. But uh, Ezreal and uh, Alistair used their summoner spells. Talk about aggression again. That is gonna be an engage onto a flash as Annie, but no, it looks like Blast is here to join the party as well. Jansu with the final Q will end up taking one in return, but that is going to be another two kills going over to Brandeis. Thresh from China is now three and zero on the Ezreal. Definitely something that you want to see for Brandeis. Yeah, it seems like a little stand from uh, Jansu trying to get super aggressive without knowing really where the fly for the uh, sorry Volley Bear was, and uh, they're able to uh, get the Alistair for the Ezreal again. It's able to stack the Conqueror with the Volley Bear to help them and uh, easy double kill for him. Pretty surprising. We really haven't seen Morn on the map all too much just yet. Looks like so far Blast has gotten the better of him early on. Has the level advantage, got that top side scuttle, um, and actually double crabbed him at the end of the day. So Morn definitely looking a bit out of sorts here early on. Yeah, Ezreal is just super strong right now with the pickaxe and tier already completed. Uh, 
he's gonna be able to hit that man really fast and do Tron damage. Yeah, and hitting that late game, hitting that power spike with the Muramana Iceborne slash Triforce, and maybe even something else is really valuable. As I was just saying about Morn, goes in for a gank, forces a flash out of Yusa, and so right instantly proves me wrong here with a, a nice play for himself there. Yeah, and uh, it's a good job getting the flash there. And uh, one thing I've seen Tufts do relatively well is actually like capitalize on the summer spells expenditures, you know. So I anticipate Aaron or Morn coming back into the mid lane and. Uh, Trying to pick off the flashless Oriana. 1000 gold lead already now for Grand Ice. And it looks like they now have essentially three winning lanes here. This, you, have the ad, you have the advantage with the 3 0 Ezreal. You have the Silas, who's basically free hitting onto a Malphite. You have the Oriana into the passing early on. Stun is going to land on the Constantine. That is a whole lot of damage for the quote unquote non aggressive bot lane early on as Alistar and Ezreal are just doing so much to try and burst down this anti early on. Yeah, I think uh, the Alistar's doing a good job of like uh, targeting the anti. Uh, it looks like Johnson's trying to hit Ezreal instead of the Alistar to maybe like find a way to turn, but there's not enough damage on one side yet, and uh, Annie's just forced to sit on the Alistar. First hijack of the game ended up in the wrong hands of Mr. Krabs misses the unstoppable force that he stole from Easy Life and he just takes it right back in return, picks up the solo kill, and Blaze Blast will not be able to take him down there. Meanwhile, in the bottom side, Jansu is getting caught out once again by the headbutt pulverized. Arcane shift forward from Thresh will end up taking him down and he's is looking for Constantine in return. Still no flash available for the Annie, and that's gonna be another two quick two kills going over to the Brandeis bottom lane. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, Shockwave was used onto Argentine Import, but he's just able to Rift Block away for now. But overall, really great trades on the side of Brandeis as Thresh now has five of the five kills on the, um, the Roll the Dice team. Yeah, and Alistair's playing this really well, uh, always finding a way to get onto the snare of Annie. Uh, I mean, we, the camera is usually uh, doesn't go to the bot lane until. Uh, Alistair's already dashing in, so I don't know too much if it's Alistair really is having too, really good positioning or the uh, Tusk Ball and not positioning that well, but uh, he seems to always find his way with the head of Pulverize onto the um, bottom lane, and uh, because Ezreal is 5 0, they're easy to pick up those kills. First Dragon picked up for the side of Brandeis for the first time all series, actually. Um, and yeah, really great job so far from the Brandeis bottom lane. Getting so much pressure here against this lane that was supposed to be so oppressive and was so oppressive in the previous game. And this just ended up being really, really disastrous for the side of Tufts early on. That's an eight minute man. <laughs> wow. You yeah, don't see that every day. <laughs> yeah. This Ezreal is going to be really strong. So it's really, really uh, up to, um, you know, the casted colleagues of Malphite to see if they can shut this Ezreal down. Because if they do, they have a huge chance of turning this game around. Morn is still farming up really well for himself. We're going to see the second blue buff of the game going over to the mid laners here as Yusa will take up that buff for herself um, in the top lane. Bit of a CS deficit in favor of Easy Life, um, but he's still doing what he does best, and that is scaling for late on this Malphite. Yeah. The fact that he has a one beat over the Salos, despite the fact that. Uh, He's down on CS, means that he's actually sitting in a position he's very comfortable with. Yep, coming in with the Kingslayer for the heals there for Mr. Krabs, and he's actually ending up a level down on the Malphite. Very interesting here. Uh, Argentine Import is hitting, getting to the point where he can start to contest his Orianna a little bit in lane. Has the Rift Block available, has some of the higher levels, has the Catalyst. But here, this could be a big gank on the top side. Unstoppable Force is available for Easy Life, and Morn is here in the waiting. Is going to jump on top of that, and that is going to be a capitalization on the top side of the map. Morn will pick up a kill for himself onto Mr. Krabs. Yeah, and, uh, I like uh, Tufts saying that our bot lane is kind of losing. We'll start uh, playing to the top side, and uh, explain that really well because, again, more Kha'Zix can uh, has the potential to take over a game. Argentine Imports going pretty aggressive here in this lane. Shockwave is actually going to be used. Not going to be able to um, finish him off though as the wrist lock was used. And Morn is here to try and punish onto Yusa. She is now isolated, but there's a Stormbringer coming in from Blast, and that's going to be a dead bug. Flat is the name of the game as Blast will pick up a kill for himself. His first of the game, first of the series. Welcome to the CSL, my friend, as you have a kill for yourself early on in this game.
Yeah. And, uh, it seemed like a nice attempt from the Palix, but again, Volibear was just waiting there in the shadows and the casting was already chucked, so a little bit of overextending there. And now a 2,500 gold lead for Brandeis is there looking for a dive here. Nice TP from Argentine Import to try and deny that. But now, looking at the side of Tufts, you have the level 6s available on Jansu and Constantine Valder. That means the Infernal Trigger and the Tibbers will be available. Stun is up for Constantine. So despite um, a, a big lead now in favor of Brandeis in the bottom lane, I do think with these ultimates, Tufts could make an all-in play. And uh, I kind of want to see what happens when the Malphite starts hitting the fray, you know? The TP, like you are saying, is up, and um, it's still a uh, smear and while they may not have as much damage as the Ezreal, they still have the tools to try to uh, make a pick and make a good fight. Yeah, right. the right opportunity shows up, and I do think that Tufts will be able to capitalize on it in the bottom side. We do see the Mountain Dragon spawning in less than two minutes, and with that second dragon available, um, we will probably we will be seeing either an ocean or an infernal soul coming up for this game. But either way, definitely going to be an objective that both teams want to contest in just a couple minutes. Yeah, one thing that's interesting now is this is the first game where um, it's actually uh, Tufts with the uh, top side winning and uh, bot side losing because um, first two games they had a winning bot uh, winning bot side and losing top side, which means they were able to get the drags, but. Uh, now, uh, it's the other team that gets the drags. W Evolve er, first, actually, for more. And very interesting Evolve pattern there. But once again, going for a bit of a more team play oriented Kha'Zix build here with that W Evolve early on. We see the dragon is spawning in about 30 seconds. Rod of Ages not completed yet for Argentine Import. Components are still in inventory. And I would imagine that he probably wants to try and get that stacked up before that happens. You see a nice Tibbers landing onto Yusa and Constantine and Argentine are trying to look to go in here. But here comes Blast. Has the Stormbring available as well as a lot of damage here. He's going to end up being super tanky and there comes that ultimate. That's going to be a dead any. And Argentine import is not going to be able to take him down. Oh, maybe he will flash Riftlock. The Q will finish him off. Meanwhile, in the bottom side though, without that any there, Gives Brandeis the perfect opportunity to try and dive onto Jansu. Morn will flash in to pick up a kill onto the Orianna in return, but that's probably going to be a first tower going one way or the other. It's going to be some sort of a race. Rift Herald is available for Tufts, but um, head start from Brandeis is way um, in favor of them. So it looks like at the end of the day, neither side will end up picking up the first turret as this dragon has now spawned with after all those kills. Yeah. But one good one good thing inside of Tusk is that that is a decent amount of gold that's getting uh, put into the uh, uh, Cassidy. It's like a 400 gold lead in the mid lane for Tusk. I mean, that isn't much compared to the like 2200 gold lead for the side of Ezreal, but it's still something. Yeah, and there comes that Roa and Sorkshu pickup for Argentine Import. Dragon is still on the table, and it looks like Brandeis are going to be the ones that started up. No teleport is available on the Cassidy, and without Kha'Zix in sight, looks like Brandeis will pick up their second objective of the game, 2-0 um, Dragon lead. Morn looks like now he might be caught out, but no, it looks like the Alistar might be there. True Shot Barrage will be doing a decent amount of chunk damage onto the enemy team, but Tufts is going to be the one that picks up a kill onto the Alistar. Yeah, and Alistair was really far ahead there. They got the drag, everyone was backing off, and Alistair tried to walk into the jungle, and uh, easy pick by uh, Morn. So yeah, after all of that, it's going to end up being a 2-0 dragon lead in favor of Brandeis. Infernal Soul will be on the table here, so it's, it's going to be more valuable than the other souls that we've had in this game so far. Thresh from China is looking to go aggressive on the Jansu, but with that arcane shift forward, it looks like he might be able to get punished. Constantine misses, oh, hits the Tibbers, but doesn't um, have the stun available. Um, so we're not going to be able to lock him down there with the Inferno Trigger and whatnot. So Thresh ends up getting away with his life after all that. But he still had to both flash, so that is something for the side of bot side, for the bot falling. Now there's no flash, uh, maybe a Malphite ulti equals a Cosmic can uh, shut down the Ezreal and claim the bounty. Yeah, they're going to need to get that bounty soon because this is one strong man here in Thresh from China. 5-0-1, but in the middle lane actually, big trades coming out from Yusa. Shockwave being burned here and ends up not getting the kill, but a lot of pressure generated here in the mid lane. We 
is the tier of the goddess also available for Argentine import now. He's going to start stacking that up really quickly, just given all the abilities that he has to do so um, in all the short cooldowns. He's going to get that Seraph soon enough and will be a super strong come level 16. Yeah, we talk about like the kind of win condition for Talos right now is to find a way to shut down that Ezreal. With the Cloth Armor and Iceborne Gauntlet sitting in his uh, inventory, that's going to be pretty hard as he already has the two items. Yeah, but I mean, we do have a lot of magic damage coming out from the side of Tufts as well. And if this Kassadin or Malphite can end up getting a nice pick um, on the Ezreal, could be big. We see Constantine potentially getting caught out once again. Turret is still available for Tufts there, so it looks like they won't be able to contest that. Dragon is not on the table just yet. Morn might have found a pick onto Blast, not going to be able to finish him off. He has a nice chunk of damage and then leaps out of the way to safety. So right now, we see about a 2,500 gold lead in favor of Brandeis. They are the ones in the driver's seat here in this game three. Yeah, and really good job from Ball. Just like moving around, trying to spread that pressure, trying to turn the five kill lead into a uh, win. Oh, a bit of an engage there. We do see this is kind of the point where the Silas will start to become unlocked. Has the GLP in inventory, has a lot of the healing with the Kingslayer, and with that Conqueror as well, just going to be able to win these 1v1 trades super hard in the easy life. Has that ultimate stolen from him as well. Could be going for an aggressive play here with this, with Red Strike walking up. Could be a potential dive coming in as well as Thresh. So it looks like instead of that, they're going to just try and go for this tower, push the easy life out from underneath. Constantine is here to try and contest as well, but actually ends up stopping that advance here from Brandeis. Oh, but in the bottom side and the mid lane, actually, Jansu is getting caught out here from Blast. Dodges, oh, dodges the Stormbringer, but the True Shot Barrage will finish him out. Really a job there from Thresh from China to pick up his sixth kill of the game. And Morn looks like he might be out of position now as well. Red Strike has the movement speed, has the WQ available. Nice use of the Shadow Assault there from Morn to try and get out, but that is the final Mystic Shot into the bug, squishing him down once again. And Thresh from China is just so strong, has the Muramana already completed, and is looking for the inner character. Oh, but right as I say that, that's another fight, and that is going to be a dead Ezreal. As we said before, lots of magic damage pick potential on the side of, of Tufts means that any Unstoppable Force Tibbers combo along with the Rift Walk could be a kill onto the Ezreal. So a huge shutdown going to one of the members of Tufts there with that play. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, he's still in ADC, you know, he may be in ADC with 7 kills, but uh, with the Malphite and the Annie doing a bunch of damage there, it doesn't really matter, it could be 0 kills, it could be a billion, you're still getting one shot there. Yeah, really unfortunate there from the side of Thresh from China, knows that he has to build defensively, as he could get jumped on by literally any member of the Tufts team. He has um, the Aegis already in inventory going towards that death dance, but with that pick onto the AD carry, it looks like Tufts has the kind of tempo advantage here to go for this Infernal Dragon. We do see Blast in Radius here to try and go for a steal. TP is coming in. This is going to be a big fight. There's the knockup um, coming in from the side of the Volley Bear, and that is going to be his blue team stealing the Dragon. Excellent job from Blast coming in and taking um, <laughs> sorry, saying that I can do the job better than UTW, taking up that steal, and that's going to be sole point for the side of Brandeis. Brilliant play there, and they get three kills in return as well. Yeah, I mean, I think as soon as we got there with uh, the rest of the team, there's no way they were that fight. They hadn't had a chance to reset yet, and uh, it was a bit of a greedy call, but I still feel like they had to go for something with Dragon coming up. You can't just give it back over for free. Uh, but either way, that's three members dead on the side of Tufts. Mid inner turret picked up for Brandeis. Ezreal is once again getting so much stronger and stronger. But one, that I think at the end of the day, a lot of that went on to Blast Volley Bear, doing so much damage with that uh, all of his abilities there, getting that bite down onto the dragon, smiting it to secure the objective, and as well, a uh, big shout out to Red Strike as well for pulverized Morn in the air as the dragon was going below that lethal range for the smite, so it really allowed Blast to, to take that up himself. Yeah, however, uh, there is a level 12 cast, and it passed level 11 already, so maybe Tusk Hope is 
uh, seeing that number turn to 16 with an Archangel Staff and their Roa that can uh, really uh, do a lot of damage in these fights. Yeah, that, that is probably the win condition for Tufts, but it's going to be a while until that becomes unlocked. We only see the tier and one Amptum in inventory right now for Argentine Import. Doesn't even have the Lost Chapter available. So it's going to be a long time until he ends up getting that tier stack, ends up getting the items that he needs in order to become stronger in this game. Yeah. And uh, Samira from behind doesn't really do too much, so I think her most use is going to come from just uh, applying a second uh, crowd control ability on uh, whoever is currently crowd controlled and knock them up for a sec. Yeah, getting that extended CC duration is something that Samira is really valuable for regardless of what level she is, whether she's level 9, level 1, level 18. So regardless of her score right now, Jansu will still be impactful later on in this fight. We see Baron is now on the table here for both of these teams. Neither side really wants to give it up and looks like the Gage is coming in from the side of Brandeis. A huge headlock pulverized coming in for Red Strike. And the rest of the team is here to follow. Jansu is running, running, running. But the Chilling Smite will slow him down, turn him to walking. Argentine Import is trying to try to um, put some damage into this Volley Bear, but it's not going to be enough. And that's going to be two straight kills coming out from Brandeis. As they could potentially look for a Baron play here with the Jungler down. That was a beautiful pick from uh, Brandeis with the uh, Hemma Pulver right under the wall and just everyone diving in after. Uh, really uh, good use of their abilities so that he returns to a Baron. And that is going to be the Baron started up here for Brandeis. Tufts knows that this objective is being started, but Morn is still in the base with Jansu. Easy Life has the Unstoppable Force available. Cassidy is here with the, some of the items, but they're not even going to try to contest it. That's going to be Blue Team picking up 22 minute Baron and Brandeis with um, so early on in this game already having 8,000 gold lead. Uh, I think maybe when it was still two to three thousand, it was relatively manageable for us. But now, with eight thousand and Baron Buff, it's gonna be really hard for them to turn this. Yeah, really, and this is really impressive coming out here from Brandeis, taking that loss in last week against BU with pride, it's knowing that they um, didn't lose any confidence in that, and coming out with a strong performance here against the Jumbos, who have already a win under their belts, and this is just looking so good coming out of Brandeis. They're looking a very dominant team. But on the side of Tufts, I do think that um, while a comeback is going to be hard, it still could be possible. You have Argentine Import beginning to rack up, has the Archangels completed, has the level 14, and getting closer and closer to that um, win condition, so, so to speak. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, it's going to be hard as the Baron power play is now underway for the side of Brandeis. Yeah. I this game just going to turn into uh is a eight is a, a 7k oh. gold lead looks like thresher china went in a little bit too far and he's going to die that's gonna be the 80 carries traded back and forth of a turn argentine import is already out of the fight though mr krabs has picked up the tibbers and could be looking to try and go on to mourn with it using the shadow assault to buy so much time that's a shockwave going into constantine as well easy life still has not used the ultimate and it looks like it's time to run for him that's going to be what looked to be a good fight coming out from Tufts. Ends up just being a two for one in favor of Brandeis here. And Morn somehow magically ends up escaping. But here comes Argentine. He has the Rift Walk, has all the mana available. Remember that this Tibbers is still available onto Mr. Krabs. And this is an AP Silas, not this support any that we were talking about. So this bear is going to be doing a lot of work here. That just comes to chains onto Easy Life. This could be the game winning push here for Brandeis. Inhibitor is under fire and will be destroyed. And it looks like after that, they will take their victory and walk away. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a good fight at the beginning. Oh, is it a bit of a ring gauge? Easy Life still has ult available, but it looks like at the end of the day, Argentine Import will not be able to get into the enemy team. And it, it looks like after that, Brandeis is going to try and reposition towards his Infernal Dragon, where the soul is available. Tufts will need to fight this to save the game but I don't know if they have the resources to do it. They have all the ultimates available, but except for Annie's, but still, they don't have the damage, they don't have the items. They're down 9,000 gold. I don't know if it's possible. Dragon has been started up. This will be big. This huge shockwave, four man shockwave landing on the side of Yusa, and this is huge. Cassidy ends up picking up the Orianna, but at what cost? That is two kills going over to the side of Tusk. Morn is still alive, could potentially still be here to steal it, but not anymore. The King Slayer will finish him off, and Mr. Krabs 
will take down the bug, and that is Infernal Soul off of an incredible play from Yusa there in the mid lane. The massive wombo combo with the uh, Orianna, like the massive shockwave into the headbutt pulverize, just I think sealing the deal. I think that was the uh, that was the nail in the coffin right there. And it looks like that might be the case. Mr. Krabs is leading the charge here. Argentine import and John Su, you have to do it. You are the saviors of this team. Argentine is going to jump in. Has the Seraphs not completed just yet? John Su is already taken down. And Mr. Krabs with the Inferno trigger doing so much. Actually ends up getting taken down. This could be a good re-engage for Tufts. Unstoppable Force is going to land and take down the Ezreal once more. So Tufts ends up holding with those death timers and end up getting a lot of kills for themselves off of an over-aggressive play from Brandeis. Yeah, but at the same time, Inhib's down, Nexus Tower 1 is down, they have Inferno Soul. Even with that little bit of overstep, it's going to be really hard for Tufts to come back. Still hard for them to come back, but they have brought the gold lead from around 9,000 to 7,000 off of that play. They do lose the soul, which is a huge um, punishment there on the side of Brandeis. Really nice job of them to pick that up. But let's talk about that Shockwave. One more time, and that wombo combo, as you said, Adi, was just incredible. Yeah, I mean, they were kind of like playing in an awkward position, you know, in the jungle, trying to like play around that entryway, and uh, really beautiful angle found by Yosa. And uh, after that, the Volley Bear, the Alzar, the Ezreal Ultimate, just really easy to follow up with and uh, take over the fight. And it is, and with that fight, we do see that. Um, Brandeis are mortal. They do. It is possible for them to to fall um, at some point in this game. But I do think that if played correctly, they will be able to take this um, game pretty easily. Um, Tufts will have their work cut out for them for the rest of this game. Yeah, and um, that's level fifteen for Kassan, which is one thing to look at. Uh, he actually got a ton of gold from the last fight, which means he got three items. I mean, maybe there's some hope for the side of Tufts, but. It's looking kind of grim. Seraphs has been unlocked for Argentine import, but looking at the kills, looking at the towers actually, it's seven to zero. So so much pressure on the map is available for the side of Brandeis. Easy Life is looking for an aggressive play, using that ground slam to try and slow down Red Strike, but not enough damage obviously from this full tank mal fight coming out. Yeah, with all the controllers they're able to put, uh, Tusk really can't walk into the jungle anywhere near there. They, it's turned into Brandeis' jungle now. And Brandeis' turrets as well. Easy Life is trying to contest um, Mr. Krabs there on that bottom side inner. But with the split push out of the Silas, has a lot of wave clear with his spells and passive. And just is, is really valuable here in the side lane with the teleport available. Baron is once again on the table. And it looks like Easy Life and Argentine Import are going to try and go on a pick on the Silas. Stopwatch is going to try and buy some time, but this could be the, this could be the signal for Brandeis to try and look for the Baron. They burn it down with this Orianna, with this Ezreal, with this Infernal Soul, and it looks like they're gonna take the trade here. It's gonna be Silas for Baron coming out from Tusk. The True Shot Barrage being issued out to try to, try to seal the deal, and that is going to be the second Baron of the game going towards Brandeis. Yeah. I mean, it, again, really grim for uh, Tufts. Uh, they've lost two Barons, they don't have a soul. Or they're, they're down, they're facing a soul down like 8k gold. However, Castle wins level 16. It's probably not gonna turn into anything, but oh boy, if it did. Ultimate, yeah, rank 3 ultimate has been unlocked. Argentine Import is the only member in this entire game to have not died yet. Has um, components of what could be potentially a Void Staff coming out, as well as that Seraphs fully stacked. Rod of Ages, fully stacked, and Zanyas completed for this fast. And going to be pretty strong. And if um if there's any sort of mishap coming out from Brandeis, this casting and could certainly capitalize. Yeah. And uh, as we get into the like uh, later stages, uh, that gold beat on Ezra will matter too much. And uh, I think casting at six items is a bit stronger. Yeah, absolutely. I do think that Ezreal is more mid-game oriented, of course. Um and so um, definitely will be favored towards this cast in early on. Baron power play is now on the table though, and it looks like they're trying to knock on the, the door of this inhibitor turret, but Mr. Kraz might have stepped a little bit too far. Morn is here, but he has not a lot of damage. There's the flash, and that's going to be a dead Yusa. Actually, Unstoppable Force was hijacked away from Mr. Krabs and ends up getting a kill back onto John Sue. Mr. Krabs is now into the back line, getting a kill onto Constantine, and there comes a nice three-man headbutt pulverize. 
coming out from Red Strike. Argentine Import is still alive, and he ends up getting a kill onto the Alistar, but it's going to cost him his life. That's him finishing off onto Easy Life. Stormbringer over the wall to try and take him down, and with Morn being the only one left, I do think this is a game for Brandex. Yeah, I think Brandex is just going to end it here. It seems like a relatively decent fight, but uh, uh, Brandex played that really well, and uh, Argentine Import really wasn't able to get on too many priority targets, and so... Uh, they're easily just able to play. I have a 10 for you guys, really you don't, and win the fight and win the game. That is going to do it. In 31 minutes, Brandeis pull off the seemingly, sorry, they pull off the victory against Tufts, winning 2-1 to one in this best of three. Tufts will fall to 1-1, one and, one, and Brandeis will go up to 1-1, one one, tying them here in the standings. Yeah, I think... Uh, Toss definitely is going to want to look at the early game of that bot lane, especially uh, with the use of the summer spells, or like uh, probably the not use of the summer spells in that like early levels. And uh, they definitely want to see like uh, how they can play around like this type of bot lane when they have uh, a little bit of a uh, when they're facing down a little bit of a lead. And it was a valiant effort from Tufts. They looked. Death straight in the eye and almost came back. Argentine import put up an incredible fight on this Cassidy, but at the end of the day, it was not enough to match that early game from Brandeis as they end up picking up that victory. And once again, with the playoffs um, only allowing, I think, one team per division, it's going to be really crucial for each of these teams to pick up victory. So a very, very important matchup going in favor of Brandeis for this week too. And I think looking forward, uh, Tufts definitely had... Uh, really good showings in this um, in this uh, series. Uh, the game one probably went a little better than game three, but in their game two obviously went very well. So I'm really interested to see uh, how they uh, look at this uh, match and uh, how they come into next week. Absolutely. So, I mean, looking forward for Tufts, they still have a lot of matchups uh, still to follow for them. Have... Um, yeah, very important things coming up soon. Their next match will be next week. Um, uh, next Saturday at 3 p.m. Presumably, we'll let you know if there's any differences with that, and they will. Um, but yeah, after, um, once again, um, that is going to be it for us here at the CSL. Um, presented by JumboCast. I am Andrew here with Avi. Once, uh, sorry, Adi. Once again, and we want to thank you guys all for tuning into the stream, and we hope to look. We we look forward to seeing you all next week when Tufts tries to come back after their loss here against Brandeis. So that's going to do it um, from here on the stream. And everyone here, have a really good night. And we'll